Hey there, hi there. How's it going, everybody? Lots of thank yous that I already owe the chat. Danieldo, thanks for the five months. Baylor is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when the water is done being stretched. Did I ever play Risk of Rain 2? I've watched a bit of Risk of Rain, both the first and the second, but I've actually never played either Risk of Rain games. Yeah, really intense music for me showing up. I, I hope that that's how I walk into basically every room, you know? It's just, it's just the way to make an entrance. Let's get that, uh, that mega crit bloop going instead. Let's see, I think there were a few others. Justin X, thanks for the 34 months of sub ports. Uh, Night Thorns with the prime sub in the eight months. Uniquely K with two full years. Greetings to you. I think that's all the, the sub thank yous for the moment. A momentum. Momentum. Thank you so much for the Prime sub and 11 months. How's it going? Whittle Wolfie. Don Oriana. Almost as dramatic as dual wielding the dramatic entrance. Now that's how you make an entrance. What if you staged your entrance, then walked out of the room and did it again? That's proper drama. And Whittle Wolfie, thank you so much for the one gifted sub. Actually, speaking of gifted subs, I owe some gifted subs to the chat here. One of the winners from our clip contest, I believe Enrique K, asked that their gifted sub prize be distributed to chat. So I'm going to give away three random subs courtesy of Enrique K in just a sec here. Give them out. Hamster is go. Kanan and Labatil. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, folks. There you go. And Library FTW, thanks for 20 months. Saying thanks so much for the cozy stream. About 5% on 820 heart win rate. Wow, you're doing exceedingly well. Recognize that the last 5% is thousands of hours, but what are the, some of the recent things I've been getting at better at over the past two years? So we're looking at uh, all four characters, not specifically any one class. What are some of the, the late learnings about 820 heart? Hmm. One is the concept of curse tolerance, creating a, a way to evaluate how many sort of dead cards that your deck can tolerate um, without falling behind the damage curve required for combats. So how many cards can you add to the deck before it starts to falter in fights? This is both your tolerance for taking curses from events in order to get resources, but it's also a resource that you can spend to pick up cards that'll be useful later. So for example, if your deck can take two additional cards without faltering, um, that means that you could take a curse for a relic, but it also means that you could take a capacitor and just hold on to that for floors and floors and floors until it eventually starts to work with the rest of the deck. Or you could take a sort of a greedy mid to late game card in the early game. An early barricade, an early dark embrace on uh, Iron Clatter are some pretty good ones to snag. A nightmare on silence. Even if you don't play it, um, just carrying it around can have huge dividends later. I think another 
big one, this one I try to express on stream pretty often, is the concept of uh, optionality in your pathing. Being able to path through your act in such a way. Let's actually look at our uh, starting act here so I can talk about this a bit more detail. So going for three in a row here with Clad, starting at two once again. Feels like a bit of deja vu from yesterday. And so what I mean with optionality is taking a path where once you get to a certain decision point, let's say if we follow this green path, we get to this fire, you could either go one way, a, a path of less resistance. You know, we could say that, okay, we didn't get strong. We need to go to another shop, get another upgrade, and then fight an elite later on. Or you can say, hey, we're strong enough. Let's fight, let's fight the strong challenge immediately. You don't have to decide that from floor one, which is a really tricky thing to evaluate. Uh, and instead, you can evaluate exactly where you are right before the challenge. And being able to stay flexible, this has two two really good functions. One is that, it, you know, um, you can avert in the event that things are going badly for your run. You can opt for a less dangerous path that is a higher likelihood of survival. But equally important is the ability to opt into challenging, very rewarding paths when you have the opportunity to do them. So if you've got the good potions and you found the good damage cards, then yes, take three or four elites in Act 1 um, and, uh, and reap the rewards. Okay, and I wouldn't actually go through two shops, of course. Let's review the start of this a bit more. I also want to look at some of the other paths in this act. It's really just kind of talking about the concept of optionality more than focusing on that specific path. Oh, I see that we could actually cross into Burning Elite territory from here instead. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Any other path that looks particularly good here? Could opt for an extra elite before this shop. You'd have to be pretty strong, but again, optionality exists. Hmm. I think I'd, I do like making the joint decision point here, though, that's for sure. How do I decide what card to exhaust with Burning Pact? Typically, the card I least want to draw again typically a, a strike or a defend or a status card. Um, if I want all the other cards in my hand, that becomes a bit of a trickier proposition. Sometimes I'll exhaust a Sender's Bane if I, I really don't want to get rid of any of the cards in my hand. But yeah, typically a, typically a starter card or status is the ideal target. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Ali CL. Let's see if this one works. I know a chat member that talks like an owl. There they are. <laughs> Boom. No refunds to a chat. That one works a lot better in person, actually. If you if you can get people to fall for it, that works spectacularly well in person. I, I know someone who talks like an owl and see if you can get them to reply, who? It's too good. It's too good. Hoomstum. So what do we have for starting options here? Upgrade a card, curse for a rare, boss swap. We do have Hexa Ghost here, and I have said that I favor the boss swap versus Hexa. It does make Yellow Path a lot more challenging. For Yellow Path, I really like Upgrade Bash, perhaps. We could even, with Upgrade Bash, think about that first Elite before the shop. Hmm. It's good for Hexa Ghost, too. The upgraded Bash, that is. A good swap can let us take even earlier elites. 
and can definitely get us uh, a leg up long term. I've really come to love the Burning Blood, though, and, and I do just appreciate the consistent power level of runs that don't do the boss swap. I think as my overall player skill has improved, I've started to shy more and more away from boss swapping. Yeah, bad boss swap could let us take no elites. Don Oriana says, why when I start the game exactly like you and do exactly like you, I get different results every time. The little decisions really add up in this game. Uh, and I think I think what might be lost a lot of the times is the, the moments where a slightly different choice in a combat leads to a couple fewer hit points um, here and there. So, you know, play your jaw worm slightly differently, you take two more damage. Play cultist slightly differently, you take five more damage. Um, and that really adds up over multiple fights to, to really snowball a run. Suddenly you're resting when you could be upgrading, um, or you don't have a potion that you could have still. And uh, it really, really adds up. If you're trying to exactly recreate my actions with the same seeds, um, that won't be possible without also using the RNG fix mod. Uh, otherwise, you'll get slightly different random results. If you're if you're talking about like direct duplication of what you see on stream, uh, you you will have to have the same mods basically installed. RNG fix alters the RNG outcome of the game in couple of ways, primarily to avoid the player being able to predict them in any way, shape, or form. So basically, it it re-randomizes the RNG values such that they can no longer be predicted with careful observation. Just to take, take away a... basically an RNG exploiting power for the player, as well as smoothing out a couple idiosyncrasies along the way. Is the rare card worth taking here? I think choose a rare card is a very good start for Clad. I don't very much like starting with a curse card, so that does make me shy away from choose a rare. But it can definitely be good. If you get an Immolate or a Fiend Fire or a Feed on floor one, holy moly, you're off to a good start. I think I'm just going to snag the Bash upgrade, though. I've really come to appreciate Bash upgrade. Not only does it, of course, help the early elite fights that I'd like to be able to take. Let's see, do I just go straight up five combats here? Yeah, if I, if I want to go to this shop, I want as much money as possible. And I want, I want to have full potions for that elite, too. We do not get to spend three energy turn one versus cultist, but I think if we draw defend bash next turn, we're still good here. Uh-oh. Well, I guess I'm taking six whether I like it or not. Just happens sometimes in the cultist fight. Nothing we can do about this draw order. Not even the worst draw order, so I really can't complain that much. But it always feels good when the Ironclad can heal a couple of hit points against the cultist. I am so in for a floor one Iron Wave. I like this card a lot. I've come to view Iron Wave as a block card that also scales with your strength, which I think is a good way to look at it. Armaments is a perfectly reasonable take as well. But I like Iron Wave for its efficient value in Act 1. 5 block 5 damage for 1 cost is quite good. Uh, it definitely starts to... F really? Definitely starts to fall off later in the run, but uh, it it does just fine early it up. What the heck? Looks like we really struck out with this draw. <laughs> Ow. Alright, well, another fight where we could have healed hit points, but we didn't. But the good news is we continue to heal with the Burning Blood. Uh, these draws would have felt extra bad if we had done a boss swap, I'm sure. Juggernaut is here very early. Juggernaut Iron Wave. Huh. Takeable. Surprisingly takeable. Twin Strike is probably more straightforward here. Makes picking up strength in the future a bit better. But that's a takeable Juggernaut. 
That's a perfectly takeable juggernaut. Hmm. Very interesting. Quite the decision point for the run. If we take Juggernaut, we have a form of scaling damage, so we're encouraged to pick up instances of block wherever they may come by. We take Twin Strike, we're just doing strike forward, hit him hard, kill him stuff, and that does admittedly work a lot better against Gremlin Knob. Could we face them? But the Juggernaut is better against uh, Legavulin. And definitely better against Hexagos, too, given how long that fight is. I'll do it. I'm going to take this Juggernaut. It's a bit unwieldy at times, but I think it could pay off here. I'm going to try defending. We have an upgraded Bash. We have Juggernaut here. Yeah, let's just do the upgraded bash thing. Oh, although I can't do 29 damage. Yeah, I should have struck one more time on turn one. That's my bad. So, minus five for that choice. Understandable. Perfectly understandable. Battle Trance? Oh my. Headbutt's also pretty sweet, but I'm going to take the Battle Trance first. This card is such a draw extender for Ironclad. and is a very, very helpful find. Would Dexguria be too strong so you could train your dexterity up to three times at rest sites? I think Focusguria would be too strong, but uh, Dexterityguria I think would be pretty cool, actually. I think it'd be cool. All right, the question is, how do we fare against a Spike Slime? The answer is probably not all that well without drawing Bash turn one. Might have to tank 18 here. Ooh, nope. We're going to do better than that. I think we're going to play the Juggernaut. Or do I just strike twice here? Maybe that's more straightforward. I'd like to be able to Bash it next turn. Goes to 44, splits at 36. If I strike it one time, it strike once, double defend, and then next turn, hopefully it's not attacking me. I believe it is 70% chance to use the debuff move next turn. Josh Prox, thanks for the 34 months of subport. Let's go double defend strike. See if this lines up a good bash. Yes, it does go for the debuff. So I can play the bash and then slimed, and then next turn, we can hit it for hopefully up to 27 damage. Yeah, we get the full 27, that's good. Okay, so two small slimes with 11 health, that's not too bad, especially with neither attacking turn one. Just gonna ignore the Juggernaut for this fight. So that's an example of Curse Tolerance, a card that does nothing, but still we're okay in the combat. And we get a regen potion. That's pretty good. I'll even be able to use that. I think there is no way you could convince me not to take Headbutt here. Headbutt is some direct damage, which we're currently lacking, and is one of my favorite combos with Battle Trance. You Battle Trance, you're looking at eight cards, then you Headbutt the Battle Trance. You get to do it again next turn. You've drawn so many cards at this point that you may have even drawn back into Headbutt and can do that again. That said, Bloodletting is good energy generation. I do like that, especially with the Battle Trance and the expensive cards. But right now, we have to fill out the rest of the damage for the deck quickly. And Headbutt is required on that front. The manipulation part is a nice little bonus, but really, we just need another attack immediately. Because of fools like this. Yeah, immediately grateful for that Headbutt, as now we can put the battle trance back on top does this fight merit the regen potion we are at 40 percent chance to find another potion ideally this fight doesn't last beyond about three turns though 
Quilly, thanks for the prime sub in the five months. Thank you, thank you. I think realistically this fight wants to be as short as possible. So with 40% chance to get a potion, as long as we can get 60% of the healing from the regen potion, I think that's fine then. Which would be, what, uh, about 10 of it? If 5 plus 4, if we can get the plus 3, that's good. Uh, I'm going to do it. I wonder if that was ever Juggernaut instead of Headbutt. Since we're getting vulnerable here, realistically, I think we want to play Bash Iron Wave and then try to kill next turn. Blocking seems incredibly unlikely. And if we're getting entangled, we also want to kill next turn. Yeah, we want to kill it next turn. We'll tank a bit more here. Nine health. Yeah, 21 coming our way. There's no block in that, that's for sure. We get 9 out of the 15 health from the regen potion. Don't find another potion, so we probably could have held on to it. We do get offered a spot weakness. Another good card with headbutt. That would have been very sweet with the twin strike. I suppose that I still take it. Just having access to strength scaling is an option. It's not guaranteed that this juggernaut pays off, by the way. We might not find feel no pain, true grit kind of stuff. So, let's evaluate here. We have 63 health, 180 gold, one potion. This is the state of the deck going into our first elite. I think we can do okay in that elite fight. It's not a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination. We could instead take an upgrade, go to the shop with 180, and then think about fighting an elite later. Against sentries, we should be just fine. We should be able to triumph over sentries without too much trouble. Um, Lagavulin is not too bad if we get Juggernaut in play, and if we don't miss the first spot weakness. Gremlinob is okay only if we draw Bash turn 1 or maybe spot weakness turn 2. Otherwise, I think we have quite a bit of a problem against Gremlinob. But we can mitigate some of the damage with Iron Wave. I'm gonna risk it here. Let's go for the Elite fight. It is Gremlinob. Get Strike, Strike, Headbutt, turn one. I'm not going to Headbutt one of these strikes. Or wait, I am going to Headbutt one of these strikes. I am going to Headbutt one of these strikes. We do get Spot Weakness, but it's up against Bash. Even if I Spot Weakness and Bash, can, we can never kill next turn. Is that correct? Let's see. With three Strength, we do 13 now. And then next turn, the strikes would deal 9 goes to 13 as well. So we could do 13 by 4 plus 10. That actually would kill. But only if Battle Trance can get me another strike. That would also cause us to take quite a bit of additional damage. Whereas if I play Bash Iron Wave, we do 17 damage right now, and then presumably another 18. And then we're still really short, actually. That sounds to me like I can't skip Spot Weakness. Yeah, I don't think I can skip Spot Weakness here. Let's do it this way. Okay, we do get two strikes and Battle Trance. So if... Battle Trance draws a third attack. We can kill with the Explosive Potion. I don't think drawing Bash would be sufficient, but let's math that out really quick. Make sure I don't have to account for that possibility. We would do 13 from one strike. Bash is going to do 19. That's 32, 42. No, I cannot kill with Bash. So we should play two strikes first. Then Battle Trance. That way, the last card has the highest chance of being a strike. Um, there will be 10 cards in the discard pile. And 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven will be hits. So we actually have a 70% chance of getting lethal here, is my understanding. With the bricks being spot weakness, defend, and bash. We also double check that uh, Iron Wave gets a kill. That would be 13 plus 13 plus 12. 26, 38, 48. Wait, 48. Let me double check that this is killing. I might have mismathed this earlier, in fact. All right, 52 minus 39 is not a kill, even with the explosive potion. No, we're at, uh, we're still three short. Well then, that's a bummer, actually, unless we get Headbutt. I guess Headbutt is the only out, then. Definitely thought I had a kill with a strike draw here. Not sure where I went awry on my previous turn math, but I definitely miscalculated something. This is what I get for not using a calculator sometimes. The Baylor math strikes again. Yeah, so three strikes at 13 is three short. In that case, the only out is headbutt, and that means we want to play the battle trance before any of the strikes, I think. We still want to play this battle trance, because if we're if we're uh, next turn drawing three mystery cards, I think we have too high of a brick chance. So I'll pay the five health that it takes to play this. Did 13 by four originally? Yeah, that was counting the 13 from Bash versus 65, but I must have gone awry somewhere. Bash also did 13 last turn. It's not headbutt. So next turn, what's our worst draw? Defend, spot, weakness... We always kill next turn. I think that means I can play one defend here and save one hit point. Which we should do, since we're already in a in medium position. Where Juggernaut being in a, a real attack could have really helped. So I'll take my one hit point, please. Get me out of here. For that, we get a Turnip, meaning we're immune to Frail. We get an Entropic Brew. We get a Burning Pact, an Anger, or a Ghostly Armor. I'm taking Anger here. Although I do like Ghostly Armor with Juggernaut. We have enough money for Ori if we want it. Ori could definitely help us build the Juggernaut. Good Instinct's also interesting here. Zero cost block is quite nice. Captain Shocker, thanks for the three months of support. There's nothing else I can really afford here beyond potions, which we already have plenty of. On sale Whirlwind is pretty good too, actually. We can still buy the Whirlwind after looking at the Orrery, is that correct? Um, that would be 216. No, that's not correct. We can't buy them both. How good is Orrery? I think early game is when it's probably at its strongest, because you can look at a whole bunch of cards all at once, and then evaluate which ones to add to the deck kind of in tandem. You can build synergies all at once, which is quite nice. We've had first Iron Wave, yes, but what about second Iron Wave? Actually, who cares about Iron Wave? We're a strength deck now. I think it's your grit. Uh, do I want a Pummel Strike? Maybe. Arma looks good. Yeah, this deck wants an Armaments. I think I skipped this one, but now we have a really solid foundation to the deck. We have lots of attacks that scale with strength in different ways, and we're starting to build a way to block as well as a way to exhaust cards in the deck with Fiendfire True Grit, so we can dis... Roy any cards that don't serve our purposes in combat, be they statuses or our own strikes. Ah. 
Ori, make your deck good. Ori, make a deck. Just do it. Alright, we're gonna go Yellow Path for sure with this deck. It's time to blap. Hello? Where's the blapping? I was promised there would be blapping. This is a reasonable time for Explosive Potion. It saves us 6 health immediately. And we're at pretty high chance to get another potion before the Elites. Kind of down for that. Let's go to 32 health right now. Yeah, I'm down for that. Get a dupe pot. Easily worth it. Burning Pact v. Shockwave. Nah, we're surly, sur certainly taking Shockwave here. Although I am also a Burning Pact enjoyer. This run is no shortage of exhaust and draw cards so far. Normally something that can be trouble to find on Clad. I'm always happy when the, the card rewards are, in my eyes, generous. I'm also happy anytime I find good draw for the Ironclad. An ink bottle definitely helps drawing one card every time we play ten cards. I really like the synergy here with uh, Anger, although it has some weird interactions with Battle Trance sometimes. That's okay. Overall, we like it, and it's something that we can set up between combats. Get in there, Juggernaut. Your time to shine. Maybe. Ow. Put my face, though. I think we get through this fight pretty easily by the end, though. We can Shockwave to lower this to 9, gain some strength, and then we probably just kill this thing outright with Fiendfire. Yeah, next turn. Next turn, you're dead. Cool. And we have Ink Bottle on 9 after doing that. The good cards continue to flow. We get an Immolate here, which I'm going to click on because it does enormous damage to all enemies and is going to make Act 2 a lot easier, let alone the rest of Act 1. Sentries versus Immolate is uh, not a matchup the Sentries win often. Crypto, closing in on two years. Thanks for 23 months of support. And Jimble Sarah. Jimble Sarah, thanks so much for the Prime sub and the 17 months. That was, that was intentional, Aaron W. You know how I didn't play the armaments to upgrade the, um, the Fiend Fire, nor did I play additional cards on the previous turn when I had energy. So I, I was setting up the Ink Bottle on purpose that time. I do sometimes take credit for accidental setups. I'll, I'll admit to that, but this wasn't one of them. Hmm. Rather play Juggernaut or Shockwave before the fight starts. So I'm gonna not play a card on this turn. Okay, there's both Juggernaut and Shockwave. Suppose I'll do the Shockwave. Then play a card for Ink Bottle. And then next turn we wake up. Ideally with uh, Battle Trance Fiend Fire. Battle Trance Armaments Fiend Fire. Let's go. Dang it. Well, we can still do the Armaments Fiend Fire part. I suppose. Or we can Armaments the Iron Wave, make an Iron Wave Plus, and then Headbutt that Iron Wave Plus. If only I'd had the Juggernaut in play. Mm -hmm. Also got a dupe pot that we could use here. Although, what would I duplicate at this moment? I don't have a lot of options. I do like the idea of blocking the heck out of this fool. Alright. I'm going to upgrade Iron Wave and headbutt it. Thank you. 
feels very odd to not play Fiendfire there. I need to know what Battle Trance is drawing before I can make the turn good, so we waste the Ink Bottle here, I think. Yeah, we do get True Grit, so I could go Iron Wave, True Grit, but I think it's got to be Bash Iron Wave. We want the Vulnerable to be down for the Immolate here. Could Dupe Pot to save seven. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'd rather have these potions for the Elite. Uh, the Burning Elite, that is. Get Gremlin Horn and an Elixir Potion, which is not a particularly useful potion. So I'm more than happy to leave that on the ground. Power through. Two wounds into our hand, 15 block. I like power through a lot when I've got a fiend fire or other reliable exhaust methods. Since we already have an immolate, this also makes it very easy for us to want to take a evolve. Hopefully we can gain some health in this fight. I'd like to go into the elite fight with a bit more health. Oh yeah. They're dead. And I'm going to try to up the ink bottle a bit here. However much that I can. Good. Horn's potion's not that good. Rage. When you play an attack, gain three block. I think we already have... We already... We've added 15 cards in Act 1, practically. I don't think I should add any more. How's it going, Babtash? Can't seem to get beyond A5 on any character. Even though you watch an embarrassing amount of the YouTube. I think an important thing to keep in mind at uh, all times is that, is that this game is, at its core, a really challenging game. Uh, even for, for card game veterans, this game is designed to constantly force difficult decisions um, and is also mercilessly random at times. So uh, one really important thing is to uh, keep your spirits up and keep trying. Uh, because even if you feel like you are not making progress, you're still learning as you play. More time with the game counts for a ton with this one. And so more time in the seat, more more runs played will always help. Maniac and a Mask, thanks for the 100 bits. And Zeknar, thank you for the raid. When did that come in? Zeknar, thank you so much for the 319 folk raid. Welcome, welcome. Saw that uh, defect win streaking is the the new goal for Zeknar. That's awesome. Uh, we're gonna be doing that later this year ourselves here on the channel. But I hope that uh, hope the crown defect managed to win. That was a pretty cool. Uh, I saw the the very beginning of that run. First relic busted crown. Second relic dead branch is a hell of a way to start a run. We're skipping these. And this. Heart fight was brutal. Won a very close heart fight, missing every apparition draw. Yikes. Big yikes. Slowing down is also really, really good advice so that you can think out. Actually, two quick tips I can give for slowing down your gameplay in Slay the Spire. Um, different strategies work for different people. It's all about kind of training yourself to take a moment and think. Option one, at the beginning of every turn, take your hands off the mouse and keyboard and just look at the cards in your hands and what the enemies are doing for a, a second or two before you decide to click on anything. That'll give you enough time to realize, oh wait, there's a relic here that might change this interaction or, oh yeah, 
uh, the enemy that is the enemy's going to do something next turn that I need to prepare for. The other thing that can slow you down if you don't like option A, um, others might dislike this option more, but this is a, a real suggestion here. Go to options and disable fast mode. Let the game play out at the normal sort of intended pace that the, the devs originally programmed in, which is, if you've played this game quite a bit, uh, actually kind of painfully slow at times. And that will give you that moment you need to really drink in the turn and what you're looking at and what to do. Muscle memory is usually good in other video games, but not here in Spire, that's true. Fast mode is a real double-edged sword if you're learning, says Phantom of Ages. Another thing to keep in mind with Spire 2 is that, especially as you're learning, you're not going to be able to make every decision correctly in a run of Slay the Spire. Not even the high-level players who painstakingly take their time make every decision correctly in a run of Slay the Spire. There's just a lot of decisions that are very challenging, um, all told. Let's see, am I playing this Iron Wave? I don't know. I guess we will give up Ink Bottle again. Looks like Anger, Iron Wave, Headbutt, Whirlwind for one. Kind of medium. We can simply win this fight with a dupe pot on the Immolate when we draw it. Overall, I'm not too worried here. Give me that back and hit him. Could have thought about sinking a bit more energy into Whirlwind there, but I, I rather like the cards we played. For what they provide. Give me Power Throw. Even better. Immolate gives me an energy. As it does 21 damage, that kills this one. Could do Shockwave Immolate? No, I can't, because I don't have th three energy. Here, I don't have two energy after playing Shockwave. But we do have two energy after playing Immolate, which means I can also Fiend Fire this one. So you die too. Thank you, Gremlin Horn. Uh. Hmm. Good. Don't take any more damage. And we don't use the potion. In fact, we're rewarded massively with a potion belt, meaning we now have an entropic brew with a potion belt and another potion besides. We're offered double tap, rage, and armor, which I don't think we're going to take. What's a good win rate to strive for on Ascension Zero before moving into higher ascensions? I think 50% is a, a really good base win rate to shoot for, which 50% on Ascension Zero shouldn't be too challenging if you've got the fundamentals of the game down, uh, although some will find it a lot harder than others. Um, it should be reasonably achievable for a normal player. As you go up higher difficulty levels, your win rate will quickly plummet from there, though. Dino Zero says, I would start to climb instantly, because why not? Well, if you if you up the difficulty every time you win on a difficulty, you'll very quickly reach a point where the vast majority of your runs are losing runs. And uh, some people do enjoy that as a learning process in roguelites, but others find it extremely frustrating. So if you're at a point where you're losing almost every single run and you don't feel like you're making any progress, it might be better to lower the difficulty back down five or even ten ascension levels uh, back to somewhere that you can find victories. I have personally found playing on lower difficulties to be a really good way to learn strategies that could win if only they were slightly better executed. Whereas on the higher difficulties, they simply fail. And I, I don't get that understanding that, oh, this was close to working. But it didn't work. 
And I've, I've found a lot of unique strategies that have made their way into my A20 play as a result of playing on the lower difficulties. Stuff like uh, Transmutation boosted by Chemical X. I think this will be Shockwave Defend. We could also go Spot Weakness Defend Defend. I think I'd rather Shockwave weaken this fool. Alright, surely this is a kill, right? Seven times six. It's 42. What about... 10 by five, that kills, right? 11 by five, that kills. There we go. Fairy in a bottle. When we would die, heal to 30% of our max health instead. Discard this potion. Hmm. Hmm. All right, now I'm taking Burning Pack, by the way. Get in here. Fairy is awesome. Very happy with Fairy. I'm considering, before we pick up the Fairy, drinking the Entropic Brew to see what's inside it. But with it, we have enough potion slots. I think we could reasonably just have them both. Let's do this. Butner says, I got two shops from two event rooms in a row last night. Interesting. Huh. I state that falsely, or is there some other weirdness going on? Hey, Glitch Wave, I have tried Bellatro. Didn't find it for me. Can the fairy even be used? Not in the not in the strictest sense. Notably, there's no way to gain five hit points from the fairy with Toy Ornithopter, for example. Uh, as you know, when when the fairy is consumed by you perishing, the, it gets discarded. But at no point is it actually drunk in the standard sense. What texture is a fairy? Tasty, I imagine. Okay, one upgrade to get through Hexaghost here. This poor Juggernaut. I think the deck would be a lot better without it. Oh well. It's got some advantages. Bean Fire upgrade looks pretty good. I also like upgrading Battle Trance. Armaments. Maybe Armaments. We have so many unupgraded cards. Let's upgrade Armaments. If we find a Runic Pyramid, that upgrade will be exceptional as well. Or for Fusion Hammer, too. All right, I guess I'll play Juggernaut on turn one. And then miss Bash because of it. That's probably still more damage than Bash, actually. I'm fine with that. Not what we wanted to see turn one here, though, in terms of dealing damage to Hexaghost. Uh, this one, however, looks pretty dang good. I delete all of these cards? That doesn't feel appropriate, right? We have to shockwave. Or we just deal 60. Hmm. Could have also battle trance before armaments. That would have meant not having upgraded battle trance, which I'm not really about. That said, upgraded shockwave would have been pretty good. Let's play it. I'll just play it. It's fine. I don't really want this power through at the moment. I'm going to lose this. There's damage to be done, dang it. You know. Hmm. Yeah, this is starting to go awry. 
fight, that is. With spot weakness a second time, we're in actual real trouble now. Uh, and I think it's time to use the dupe pot and drink the entropic brew. This is not a good fiend fire draw either. Dang it. Maybe bash headbutt? We could spot weakness and headbutt it. That's true as well. I could do something like... Bash, dupe pot the headbutt, get back battle trance, and true grit to deal with this hand. It's a pretty good idea. Qua, thanks so much for the prime sub in the four months. You're heckin' welcome for all the awesome content. And Ball Thamos, thanks so much for the prime sub in 39 months, three baker's dozens, and nearly four metric years. What about duping the spot weakness next turn? That would mean not playing Bash. Don't love that. And actually, before I play the headbutt, I'm going to drink the Entropic Brew, see what we get here. Strength Pot. Okay, let's use that. Okay, I think we're okay now. So I certainly hope so. Beanfire, come on. Yeah! Alright, 18 times 7. Is that just a kill right now? Hundred and twenty six. It is not, but it's very close. I guess it would be lethal if I use the colorless potion for an extra card, but I don't need to kill right now, so I don't see why I would do that. We have two more turns. We can just save the potion. Can't use the Swift Potion to get more cards here. Note that we have the no draw effect from the Battle Trance. So the drinking this potion at this moment does absolutely nothing. It's very important to recognize that, otherwise you might be tempted to waste it here. It's all good. Like I said uh, a couple of times before, the only person who's expected to keep track of all of the different effects going on in the run is yours truly. That's what I'm here for. Everybody else is half paying attention, so it's uh, definitely hard to fully assess the game state, usually. Let's do this. Take nine here. Yeah, let me just win. All right, we're through the Hexaghost. We no longer have our Entropic Brew, um, but we do have mostly a full Potion Belt, and that alone is enough for me. Reaper is here as a way to gain health back, or if we want a better way to scale strength. Well, is it better? Faster way to scale strength. There's Demon Form. I think in this case, I'd rather just take the Reaper. There's also Berserk, which could be a way to gain energy, but it is tricky to get into play and often not worth it, I find. I'm going to consider Berserk a bit more, but not that much more. Sozu, huh? Could have been a certified Sozu moment. I don't hate Sozu with Fairy in a Bottle, uh, although I think I'd rather take the Cursed Key here, giving us four energy and getting us a curse when we open a non-boss chest. Even if we have to stick with a curse for a while, the deck has numerous ways to delete it. Fiend Fire, True Grit, Burning Pacts. The deck is very large overall, so we have lots of non-curse cards to draw into. 
Um, four energy combined with the Gremlin Horn, combined with the Fairy in a Bottle, should make fighting Elites in Act 2 very simple for us. I like that. I also value more base energy here because the more energy we have, the more cards we play, and therefore the more frequently the Ink Bottle will activate. Whereas with the Black Star, I don't feel I'm quite as confident into the Elites of Act 2 here. We might get tricked into going this far left path, which looks kind of spooky, kind of awkward. Although it does have shop after the chest, I guess so does this, but then we're missing the Elite here. I think probably we're planning on skipping the chest. Unless you're telling me I really do want to go this way. I could believe it. Yeah, far left is okay. I don't like that we're married to that path, but with the fairy in a bottle, I'm pretty sure we can survive it. Hey, Gratz Infrared Eclipse on the A20 Heart Kill. Shivs and Kunai. Kunai GG, as they say. If Demon Form gave you some strength of the turn you played it, how much better would it be? A lot better. One turn faster, so to speak, and that, that counts for a ton. Is Blackstar a win more relic? It can be. It can also be a way to win from behind. A catch-up relic. But you have to be more deliberate in that case. Usually if you're if you're trying to use it as a catch-up mechanic, you have to have a way to get through the elite fights. So either your deck is very lopsided, meaning you're good at elite fights but terrible at boss fights, and you need the relics for the boss, um, or you have a lot of potions you're willing to burn. Human who lives on Earth, welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I guess that's all of us now, ain't it? Unless they get Twitch on the ISS these days. Hmm. I do like the far left. All right, we'll go far left. We get that third elite. I'm I'm really willing to fight elites here. Again, with Gremlin Horn and Immolate and Whirlwind and Four Energy. Currently, we're going to be good at them. Oh dear, that is a catastrophic turn one draw. Ooh. My Swift Pot here? All of these cards are useless, unfortunately. Gagula, thanks for the Prime sub in two full years. To fight the elites before the shop, I'm not happy with this. You drew, skip a turn. I guess what I'm going to do is use the colorless potion here. These are a bit unreliable. Doesn't actually help me, or does it? Ink bottle, go! Right, well, that's a, that's a wash, alas. Like, playing the Shockwave is just bad because it's four less damage than playing the Reaper. Good talk. Yeah, it's Artifact Strip. So I remove two Artifact Charges, uh, then I sacrifice more damage to play Bash... That gets rid of the last artifact charge, and then... Uh... Yeah, it's fine, right? Blinking Henry, thanks for the Prime sub and the five months. Thank you, thank you. At least we can't be frailed. Ow. But my face, though. Well, this has gone... Let's call it badly. It's gone badly so far. The straw order. Next turn looks kind of fine. Probably do want to play the defend. Ugh. And if I play two cards, I draw a card immediately, so I can headbutt Anger, perhaps. 
All right. Ow. Can't kill it, not quite. We go Iron Wave True Grit. That's better than playing Power Throw. I don't want to redraw the wounds. Can I do 24 damage, please? 16. Yeah, we got it. Well, that certainly could have gone better, but uh, whatever. We're here with 45 health. Hopefully the next fight will be a bit more gentle. Yeah. Could be worse, I guess. Question is, do we play the spot weakness? And I think with Reaper, the answer is yes. Play spot weakness over to Fed here. <clears throat> Take eight on turn one. We don't get frailed either. Now we can play Juggernaut, defend Iron Way. Hey, that's kind of cool. We might even be able to get some of our health back here. Indeed. Ten health back. That's great. And now you're toast. Okay, we gained health from the avocado. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. The baseball is back. This time we at least have fiend fire on turn one. Although our turn one is equally abysmal here. Well, maybe not. Emulate's pretty good. Alas, the spot weakness does nothing here, but... Oh, well. I like it. I just whirlwind for four. We at least kill the sentry here. We'll draw one. But my face, though. This time I can block this attack, at least. Uh, looks like we're going to Armaments first. Then Battle Trance. So the draw order here. And we just headbutt what? We do Power Through. Strike Plus. By headbutt, you're now at 24, which means Fiendfire kills. So put Fiendfire on top. Okay, this wasn't too bad on the rematch. More common attacks. We really don't need any of this. There's a faint argument for a body slam, but I don't think so. I think so. Maybe if it was a body slam plus. Hmm. Centurion Mystic. Usually this is about focusing damage on the Centurion, getting the Centurion killed quickly. I think that's the case here too. Just do Headbutt then Fiend Fire for max damage on Centurion. That way we have Ink Bottle at 9 next turn. Another fight where Turnip does good. Turnip is relevant in almost half of Act 2 combats, by the way. Uh, including especially Collector. So many sources of frail. The baseball, the avocado... The mystic... Snake plant. Okay. 
Hmm. So here's an example of where I would Burning Pack to Cinder's Bane if I was going to play it. We could just Shockwave Reaper. Heal 20, take 13 back. That's not too bad, actually. We're not going to get a better Reaper opportunity than this. Well, that's not necessarily true because of Spot Weakness. It's going to be really hard to get Spot Weakness to land again, though. I think we probably just do Spot we uh, Shockwave Reaper here. It's a net gain of health. Let's do it. Just keep attacking the Centurion here. And then we should be able to set up Ink Bottle as well in this fight. I guess with the Burning Pact, I maybe could have farmed a bit more health here. Now that I think about it a bit more thoroughly, it would have been a painstaking process. Not impossible, though. Not set up ink bottle correctly. All right, I'll be back. That's a bit better. Another unupgraded true grit. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Jingo, thanks for seven months. Hello, my son. I think I'm going to skip this. I think we have so many cards in the deck that skipping a whole bunch of cards isn't the worst thing. In fact, we haven't added a card this act yet, but uh, it's okay. That is okay. Bird nerd. Bird nerd. shows in there. Reaper heals for more than six. Or I can defend and headbutt. Headbutt immolate? I want to headbutt immolate. Should kill the bird. And then Fiendfire kills the Chosen. So we're out of this fight with a net gain of health. That's all that really matters here. Uh, we should play another card first, though, for Ink Bottle. Alex is decent. Yet another card that would need, would need an upgrade, though. We don't have upgrades to give. Daddy Boy with the Prime sub in the three months. Hello, Daddy. Zorak, thanks for the Prime sub and the 13 months. And a Gremlin Leader awaits. Looks like we can do Shockwave, Headbutt, Iron Wave to kill Fat Gremlin. That'll, that'll work. And then I have an energy left over. That's not too bad. Feels like we've got Hammer, not Key. It does. Although that's only because we haven't reached a rest site this act. Not that we're getting very many, mind you. Thank you for not attacking me. Commence the bonking. Be a great time for Immolate. Bummer. It is not Immolate time. That's a 
pretty good Reaper, though. We go to basically full health. We will get attacked next turn. But I'll draw Immolate next turn. So maybe it's fine. Maybe it's fine. Unfortunately, Grim Leader attacks for 16 by 3, which is the big number. Definitely the big number. Then we Battle Trance. And I guess I'm blocking. Pike would do 13, huh? Huh. All right. Well, that is what Reaper is for, I guess, so I'm fine with this. Ow. But my health, though... the anger then. Okay, we're good. Just play Immolate, kill next turn, in on 9. We're out of here. Get Eternal Feather, healing us at rest sites. Fortuitous timing. It's also based on the size of the deck, which is big. And a smoke bomb, which is an emergency way out, if nothing else. I don't totally hate an upgraded clothesline here for three additional turns of weaken. Good way to deal with collector. Good way to deal with heart. Dunkelheim with the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. And hey, sellouts. Thanks for the prime sub and the 12 months. One year of making working at home that much more fun. That's great. Let's take a clothesline. Does the feather round up or down? I believe it's down, right? So, yeah, because the phrasing is for each five. So only for a complete set of five do you get healing here. So five times five. We have 25 cards. 20 Or five sets of five, rather. We should heal 15 at the rest side here. That's what we do. Heal 15. We're also going to upgrade, I think, Immolate, so that Slavers are way easier to kill. Fiendfire is another good upgrade. Actually, we don't have Fiendfire upgraded. That's an essential upgrade for Collector. Let's upgrade Fiendfire first. This is also the upgrade versus Book of Stabbing. And I would like to have a good answer to Book of Stabbing. I feel like Grumlin Horn already answers Slavers in a way. And it is indeed the book that we face. So, that's a thing. Is this just bash Iron Wave, or do I go one step further and headbutt the spot weakness? I think it's just bash Iron Wave, and then if we draw the Fiend Fire, I should be able to kill with the Swift Potion. This is not the Fiend Fire. Do I still just Swift Potion? I think I wait, potentially. Maybe not. Tricky is what this is. It's coming up next. Fight, fight, fight. Great news. Detonator 5000 with a prime sub. I'm always flies, but still loving the stream. Good to hear it. Could just leave. I don't think I want to do that. Yeah, currently we can spend all our energy on damage, so I'm not thrilled with the idea of not attacking here. We should just play our attacks. Might even save the potion. Ow. Okay, so Fiendfire does 19 by 4. Yeah, this is where the Swift Potion comes in. If we draw Reaper, we can do Reaper Fiendfire too. No Reaper. That's fine, just kill it. Yep, 
get a lantern for energy on turn one and a Sneko oil that says draw five cards and randomize the cost of cards in your hand. We also get a very good card here, Offering, allowing us to trade some of our health for even more energy and even more draw. I love Offering with Reaper, even more so with the Eternal Feather, as we have quite a bit of healing now available to us. This is a medium chest. We're gonna have to take three fights with the curse here. That's not so bad. We have a fairy in a bottle and a smoke bomb, so I'm really not worried. Let's uh, let's open this up. We see there's a normality inside, along with a bunch of money, and it's ceramic fish versus sapphire key. I say sapphire key, and we just skip the next chest. So normality is where the smoke bomb might come in handy here. If worst comes to worst. I don't think things will come to that. At least I sure hope not. This is a pretty bad draw, though. I can't be frail, so it's not that bad. Five times seven is not enough. I could Sneckle Oil to kill right now. Actually, is that a guarantee? We'd have uh, five by nine, right? That's only no seven by nine. Yeah, that kills. Okay, we'll do that. Even if we draw into normality, and even if the fiend fire costs three, we still kill instantly. So that's nice. Interesting. I think I'm going to take this Entrench. It has a chance to be useful on its own, and it makes Calipers or Barricade into a win condition. Especially with Headbutt. This should be an easy fight. Operative word should be... Is it worth sticking around? Might not be. Hmm. What would I say this wretch runs chance of killing the hard is at the moment? We got a good start, but we're missing a few pieces. I'd, I'd say we're probably in the 70, 75% range from here. Might go a bit down if I have to use the smoke bomb, which I am strongly considering this time. Well, it's only got 59 health left. No, I want it to die. Take some damage to make that happen. I regret my choice almost immediately. Damn it. Let's take 11 more, huh? We could Reaper and then leave. Gets back some of the health. Just gonna go to nine. I am not afraid. There we go. Get the rewards. Bloodletting looks pretty good. 
lose some health, gain some energy. Can you hit you? I'm cool to smoke bomb this fight if need be, although hopefully we can get a bit of health. Not with this draw, huh? All right, I'm out of here. That's fine. Okay, lose the curse. Buy a new Entropic Brew? That sounds pretty sweet. Second Wind is a sort of must-have. I could see Orange Pellets being okay here long-term. Short term, I definitely like Second Wind and Entropic Brew. Maybe also Dark Shackles. Definitely a Second Wind Entropic Brew. Leaves me with 214. Not enough for Pellets and Dark Shackles. So maybe I take Pellets. Pellets have a decent chance to pay off big against Collector, especially since we have this Power Potion. Let's take Pellets. Upon playing a power attack and skill in the same turn, remove all of our debuffs. Say the pellets. Also works on Battle Trance. Although we are already immune to Frail, so there's not uh, as much of an upside there. Hmm. Not the greatest start to Gremlin Leader rematch, but uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's a bit better. Okay, just fiend fire for big damage here, surely. We lose the whirlwind, but we still have the emulate. We also lose this bot weakness, but whatever. Bot weakness has not been good this run. It's been very inconsistent, unfortunately. So didn't consider the possibility that I might get destroyed on this turn if I don't draw damage. Spooky. I think this has to be power through burning pack to wound? Or I could power through second win. That's a lot of juggernaut procs, actually. But yeah, we're looking at a lot of damage headed our way. More than the fairy can save us from, that's for sure. No other card draw in the draw pile, so Burning Pact will be it. All right. No downside to Pact first? Yes, there is. What do you target? That's a downside. Delete Strike? How do I kill the... That's... That kills a gremlin, though. Well, it finishes off a gremlin, hopefully. I kind of need that damage, potentially. Like, what if I draw into anger, and then I need to kill a sneaky gremlin? Mm -hmm. And, I, and then I think we can look at all four, all four of the cards in our hand and eventually conclude, actually, yes, we do need these cards. Um, and so I might have to go power through Burning Pact... Does it ever drink the Power Pot and the Entropic right now? That would be the Panic Maneuver. I think I'd rather do that after seeing what Burning Pact is drawing. Let's start with Power Through, see where the Jug Damage goes. That's not the good spot. It's not the good spot. Okay, we get Offering. That's good. Immolate? That's not Immolate. However, we do get Armaments and Reaper. Which feels like it lets us get at least some stuff done here. Now might be the time to look at the Power Potion, I'm gonna be honest. We need to know if we're getting Dark Embrace, or Feel No Pain, or... Eruption? These would all really change what I'm doing here. So yes, I'm down to use the Power Potion now. Inflame would also be good, right? That would make Reaper heal for way more. And then I can Chain Kill the Gremlins. 
So corruption's a hit. Um, Dark embrace is a hit. Feel no pain's a hit. Inflame is a hit. It's corruption. Corruption it is. Okay, so all the skills are free. Upgrade the hands. That's good. Play Reaper, heal a ton. And now we kill. Yeah, we got them all. And Shockwave too. Okay, so instead of dying, we full block and then kill everybody. Without Immolate's help even. Get out of here, Immolate. And we healed a bunch. And we set up Ink Bottle for Collector here. Wait, no! <laughs> oh well, that's fine. We get a White Beast statue, meaning we'll always find a potion in potion in uh, combat rewards. Very glad we didn't take the Sozu. Don't think I want these. Hmm. Feels like we might want to drink the Entropic Brew now. So that I know what to upgrade for Collector. Would Sacred Bark be good now? Yeah, I think it would be. Let's drink this. Blood Potion, Flex Potion, Fear Potion. Okay, if we Orange Pellets with the Flex Potion, should be a very easy boss fight. And we're basically at full health, so we can snag an upgrade. I like upgrading Offering. I like upgrading Burning Pact. I like upgrading Battle Trance. I think I'm going to upgrade the Offering for the immediate draw. We don't have a power for pellets. We have Juggernaut. The Blessed Juggernaut from Act 1 is here. So yes, I can flex potion with pellets on the Juggernaut turn specifically. That means we won't be cleansing the debuffs, but we will be having five strength right from the get-go. And you know what? I think that's just fine. Might also fear pot here. That also seems correct. Since we're guaranteed to get more potions, I don't feel bad about just throwing them at the boss here. Get me out of here. And then Juggernaut, get in here. So we did over 100 damage on turn one. That's got to be a good start. I'm going to play Arma Shockwave, no Reaper. Or I could do Shockwave Reaper, no Arma. That's probably better, actually. Heal back to full. Take 25. And now we can headbutt the Immolate, which will deal lots of damage, right? 26, 39. So I can headbutt Immolate. Uh, I could Burning Pact Immolate, the Burning Pact to draw the Immolate, or I could just play the Iron Wave and then draw off the Ink Bottle here. And then I get two more energy and two more draws. Let's go Defend Strike. You're dead. Nice and simple fight against the Collector. Now we have a Fruit Juice. Excellent. The juice is loose. We can take an Exhume, a Limit Break, or... Berserk? What about Berserk here? We can simply remove the debuff. As long as we play a power in the same turn. Hmm. Doesn't seem too hard. Berserk is a power. I like it. Limit Break is pretty cool too, but with only the one spot weakness in a 
32 card deck, our strength is now very unreliable, unfortunately. But are we also Sneko pellets? Sneko berserk pellets. I think we are a Sneko deco. Yeah, I think we might be. We'll draw more cards each turn. Although there'll be initially random cost, uh, once we purge debuffs the first time, the cards will no longer be random cost. Don't like the idea of trusting the crown with how much of a blessing a feel no pain would be at this time. Or a dark embrace. I'd really like to find one of those. We could transform an upgrade three with the astrolabe. That's simple but effective. I mean, we still have three, uh, five strikes in the deck. So getting rid of three of those might be a pretty good idea. But the plus two draw per turn of the Sneko Eye is so powerful. Let's take Sneko. We have lots of cards that scale with the number of other cards in hand as well, like the Bean Fire and the Second Wind. All right, now we can drink the fruit juice. I guess there's no upside to it quite yet. I'm gonna get that many rest sites, huh? So I definitely wanna check this for Mind Bloom. Would even consider checking these as well. Definitely take a different path. We got 999 gold. Uh, but so far, the intended path is this one. It's got to be power, attack, skill. Oh, I don't actually have to purge the Sneko debuff. I can also just play with Sneko if I wish to. Sometimes that's what I'll wish. Okay, we'll go next, I guess. Double fruit juice. The juice is loose. Do we take a second power through? I could see it being pretty good. Still hoping that maybe an evolve shows up. Take another power through. Secretly, it's an orb walker. Well, I guess maybe not secretly. So yeah, power, skill again, attack. That purges the confusion, meaning we now draw seven cards per turn, but they're all normal cost cards. Which is somehow beneficial. Another strength source. Vitally important for this deck. It's the same one that we already have, but I will definitely take another spot weakness here. And yeah, we're gonna go three events. This could be anything, even a merchant offering us a feel no pain, which I instantly buy. 
Do I know about the Run Resumer mod? Yes, I'm aware of Run Resumer, and I think it does some pretty cool things. Haven't yet decided that I want to try it out on uh, for the stream, but I definitely see some utility in being able to go back to a fight from a run you just played and uh, see how things could be differently. Run Resumer is a mod that basically creates sort of mini save states all along your run of Slay the Spire. So from the run history screen, after you've already finished playing, you can go back and replay any of the fights from your Spire run exactly as they were with the same draw order and same relics and all that and see how you might have done differently. Did the boss you lose to have a winning line? Um, was there a way to save five health against that jaw worm? Run Resumer can answer these questions and more. I don't have to go to that shop. Well, yeah, I kind of do, actually. Yeah, let's see if we get Mind Bloom. Let's see what happens. Double Orb Walkers. I'll mess with these nerds. We got 80 health and then some. They give a rare relic and a bunch of money. They're going to be toast. Cannot play a power attack and skill on the same turn here, unfortunately. This is definitely a bad start. Let's start with Strength Pot, because I'm going to need some help. Do I get to play Feel No Pain? I really want to. So I guess we just skip the block. Steal damage, get Feel No Pain. Take some damage, too. Okay, yeah, and that immediately turns into Fiend Fire. Good. We do 12 times... 7? No, 12 times 6. Which uh, is, of course, 72. Bummer. Yeah, that's a bummer. I wish any of the potions would do anything to change that. If we anger first, then the fiend fire deals 12 less damage, so we lose damage and block if we play the anger. And we can't play enough cards to draw the anything with the ink bottle, unfortunately. So now we just uh, fiend fire, take a bunch, take 21 more. Colorless Potion. I wish we had one. We got a Blood Potion, but not a Colorless Potion. Hmm. Do I try to play the Reaper here? I don't think so. Like this. can't uh, restore to ourselves here. take a little bit more. Could do Juggernaut power through strike. We're set up for next turn, but are we really? We're not full blocking next turn, surely. Looks like we need to be a bit more aggro than this. I guess playing the offering is reasonable. Let's go, Juggernaut. Strike. Offering. Now we can Shockwave, Iron Wave.
Okay. Definitely an exp <laughs> definitely an expensive fight, but I think the ice cream will be worth it. Um, we find another fruit juice, making uh, 15 health from fruit juice so far, as well as Iron Wave Plus versus Arma Plus. I'm going to take one more Arma, again, given the sheer number of cards in the deck. And a surprise treasure chest containing a curse and a rare or uncommon relic. I'm going to take this. If the curse is bad enough, we'll skip this elite and go to the fire instead. It's a decay. We get 81 gold and a kunai. I think that's probably worth it. I'm still fighting the elite, too. I got a lot of health. Killers Scrubby, thanks for the six months of subitude in advance. Appreciate ya. All right, kunai, let's go. Keep some energy. Now that we have ice cream, hoarding energy is really good. I figured you might do that. Stinky Nemesis. It's for second winding, what, two cards? That's mediocre, but fine. And I can headbutt a block card. Let's do that too. Not bad. Ice cream with whirlwind is also really powerful. Upon review. Uh, I guess we cash this in now. It's free, right? Yeah. Good. Could play Reaper for one hit point. We have a chance to redraw it next turn, so let's not do that. would like to see Reaper. Pretty unlikely, though. I don't think it's worth playing Offering here. I'm just going to play Battle Trance. We get it anyway, because we're lucky. Good for us. Alright, very good Elite Fight. That went spectacularly. We get a Boat Thingy for 10 block on turn 1. We get yet another Entropic Brew. And if we want, we can take a second Shockwave, which I think is pretty good, actually. Let's grab one more of those. Drink a fruit juice, pick up the Entropic Brew, and head to the shop with loads of money, which will be used to remove this card. As for other things at the shop, we can buy the Happy Flower. I like Happy Flower with ice cream. Secret Technique is okay. Or we can simply save money for a future shop in Act 4. I say I also owe the chat a dad joke courtesy of Big Richie. Hmm. What have I got for us today? What happens to photons who break the, the speed of light? They're sent straight to prism. No refunds, was shut. Is it too late for Red Skull? I don't think so. I think Red Skull could have some upsides here. Really like the idea of more energy, though. Let's take more energy. Let's do it. 
And now, Reptomancer. Who will most assuredly perish. To our nonsense. What about spot weakness, though? Juggernaut or spot weakness. If I play Juggernaut, I remove the confusion. I'd really prefer not to be confused here. Strongly prefer not getting confused. We get seven draws, so we should be pretty safe here. Looks pretty good so far. Love that part. All right, Juggernaut, what can you do for me? Good. Good. Don't play that one. That would actually make us vuln. We full block, we got rid of three daggers, and we got the feel no pain down. I'll, I'll take that, considering we didn't draw immolate or anything even remotely similar. Here, I'm going to headbutt the... the Zerk here, I think. Then we're going to Battle Trance. Berserk. Remove the debuff from the Battle Trance. Spot Weakness. Offering. And now you're dead. Beautiful fight. Get an Art of War, giving us energy if we don't play an attack, even better with Ice Cream. A Cultist Potion for one strength per turn, that's juicy. And a third power through, if we want one. Rug is okay. I don't feel like I need any of these cards, given that I have 37 cards. This, this one we skip. First key, be gone. Please don't curse me. I've had enough cursing, thank you. I guess we just take it. It's fine. We can remove the debuffs next turn if we want to, I guess. Yeah. Let's do it again. Power, attack, skill. But then we're getting debuffs again, again. So, uh, hmm. Garbage. Playing Fiendfire could really backfire on us. I don't have to do that. Okay, this is good. For the last time, please, no debuffs. Plain attack here. Okay, good. Now life is good. Might even be able to get some health back with Reaper. Sure can. Great fight. Our potion's pretty good. Evolve is finally here. Get in here, Evolve. No, uh, Dark Embrace, but it will do. I like Power Potion a lot with the Orange Pellets. Maybe we get rid of Blood Potion? Let's get rid of Blood Potion. 
and I'm going to recall now to leave myself the most options for the final fire. That way we can upgrade a barricade or demon form that we find if we really want to. The Kunai proc here. I'll definitely play the Shockwave. First of all, how dare you? Second of all, ouch. Mm, probably not worth playing. Now you have the cowardice to not even spot my weakness on this turn. Such ridiculousness that you place before me. Lepers would be good here. And they most assuredly would be. One card block 117. Too bad. <laughs> and as a parting gift, a fruit juice. I know that comes as a major surprise here. This ironclad is juicing. There can be no denying it. I think I'm gonna lose the... Maybe this is a don't lose anything situation. We're guaranteed more potions though. I'll take the five max health. We got the juice. We got it. It's fine. Lose five max health, go back down to 90. Totally fine. Gil. Power, skill, attack. Do I ever get rid of the fairy because it's also an extra potion from the Entropic? That is an option. Yeah, that is an option. I don't feel like it's the smart play. But it might be. Having the bait, larger base draw is so much more consistent here. Really like it. Who's my home there? Oh, good. We got another one. Very smooth transient fight is usually a good sign. Swift Potion's not terrible. Corruption is exceedingly welcome. We have a huge deck of cards. We have Ice Cream. We have Sneko Eye. We have Feel No Pain. It's a great find. Not much point in upgrading that Corruption. I like the Feel No Pain upgrade. Actually, I like the Juggernaut upgrade. Now that the Juggernaut is actually doing work, I want to make sure it says plus. It's becoming an increasingly large portion of our damage. And look at Entrench actually doing stuff. How quaint.
No powers here, so I'll just pass the turn, bank some energy. If we purge our debuffs at this point, though, we do lock in these prices on these cards, which is not the greatest, but acceptable. Block 15 and Fiendfire for zero. Kind of lame, but I do like it. All right. corruption right away? Let's try it in this fight. Oh, I need feel no pain down. My bad. I want to draw a card. Pretty good whirlwind damage. Let's do it. Call that plated armor off. energy not playing whirlwind and we can play more whirlwind instead it's just better all right don't and Deca are down next up will be tim the time eater Tim could be a bit of a challenge, but I think at the same time, it won't be that hard. Especially not with Confusion Purge turn one here. Locking in a one cost clothesline, even. A burning Pact of Wounds. I don't think so. Tim can affect our draw, but the base 7 draw per turn of Sneko Eye is really going to counteract that as well. Not convinced that I want to play Corruption in this fight. Don't think I'm going to. Let's get rid of it. Headbutt the spot weakness. Now let's headbutt True Grid. Drawing Mediocrity or a Burning Pact even. Burning Pact. Something that draws and also exhausts. So we can get rid of stuff like Strike here. Buffs. Play this. Okay, we're pretty well set up now. Gaining lots of energy per turn, doing lots of hot nonsense. It's what we like to do.
Brings Tim below half health, meaning they'll skip this turn. We can just accumulate energy for our Whirlwind. Is this deck going to beat the heart? I think so. At least I hope so. Certainly hope so. But I might be a bit biased here. Bye, Tim. Get deleted. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these potions? Yeah, uh, generally, anytime I get to act four with all of my potions intact or a, a full potion belt, it's a pretty good sign that we can finish out the run successfully. The source of all this fruit juice. Four fruit juices this run. It's pretty crazy. Crazy indeed. Can't buy medical kit, but we could buy elixir, distill chaos, or swift potion. Swift potion versus elixir. Interesting choice. I do like having the ability to exhaust our strikes with the elixir. I'm just going to like, go as we are, though. Let's just see what happens. That's a pretty nice turn one. No evolve, mind you, but I can do a lot of damage with Fiendfire. I'll also draw another card. Trying to kill the shield first? I think so. This looks like a shield first kind of situation. Seventy damage. I can make it more with the swift pot. I think I'd rather use the swift pot next turn though, when I'm going to have two burns on top of the draw pile. And a lot of damage headed my way, and all my best block cards in the discard pile. It really looks like a tough turn too. But no Reaper for us. Playing Strike just for the Kunai wasn't worth it. Okay. Uh, this is definitely where Swift Potion comes in. We've got a lot of debuffs and a lot of strength up. If I can turn that into actually killing the Spire Shield, we might have something. Let's just start with drawing three. Is there any reason to play any cards before I draw? No. Draw three. Second Wind, Juggernaut, Bloodletting. Wow, I like that. Quite a lot, in fact. We do want to turn back around and face the Spear, presumably. So we'll take some damage here. That seems to be unavoidable. But not too, too, too much. They should both be weakened. Is that true? Yes. If we double Shockwave, they're both weakened. Definitely going to play Juggernaut. Spesner, thanks for the Prime sub and the seven months. Support. I think I'm actually not playing the clues line this turn. We get five more block if I don't spot weakness the second time. No Reaper. I think I just take the extra block here. Well, I am allowed to play this. I don't think I'm going to. All right, Whirlwind, now would be the time to 
show up. Thank you. There you are. Okay. We get Toy Ornithopter, restoring five health whenever we use a potion. I think our health will be just fine. What a great find at the very end there. And a Fire Breathing Plus, dealing damage whenever we draw a status card, of which there will be a decent number. You know what? I'm going to take that too. We're at 41 cards. I like it. We've even got armaments here to use with the Power Potion. And to use with Evolve. Although, do we prefer to keep the Power Potion as a guaranteed debuff purge next turn? Mr. Fortress, thanks for the Prime sub and the four months of sub ports. We could just play Arma Evolve Fire Breathing here. Fire Breathing first, draw one card. And then Arma, yeah, Evolve. What a fat deck. Hey, that's rude. Yeah, I'm gonna wait one turn on this Power Potion. Off the man, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Play this for Ink Bottle. Turnip for what? There's no skill! <laughs> There's no skill here! Chad, I have no skills. Wait, bloodletting is a skill. Never mind, there is a skill here. Huzzah! I don't know what skills are, apparently. Okay, let's use the power potion then. Another feel no pain. Give me that. Thanks. There's two? Definitely only one. And I think we use the Entropic Brew now? I think so. Forge Pot and another Power Potion. Okay, let's Power Potion again. Berserk sounds good, I think. Then we go Berserk, Forge Potion. Or I could not Forge Potion, I don't have to. Could forge pot the shock waves instead. That might be smarter. Only one block per exhausted card. Yeah, I'm gonna wait on that actually. Let's go berserk. Juggernaut. Feel no pain. Feel no pain. Bloodletting. And then I guess bash can be the attack. And then we can drink the regen potion. Oh, I don't need to forge pot the shock waves because they are upgraded by armaments. Do I want to headbutt any of these cards for next turn? Not really. Guess I'll just save more energy. This is another good Forge Potion, given how many cards are unupgraded here. Let's do that. Okay, get rid of... Burn? 
is corruption. Get rid of Himalay. Play corruption, play fiend fire. Looks pretty good here. Let's just play this fiend fire. Tons of damage. Full block too. Oh, and now the nonsense. Time to go to Damage Town. Yes. below 200. Probably just gonna headbutt that whirlwind here. After I get it below 200, mind you. There we go. Okay, still have our fairy as well, but I think we're there. Yeah, looks like we're there. Whirlwind gets to deal 18 times 20. GG. GG. Be free, my fairy friend. Be free. Justin Boober. What a name, what a player. Thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Another great ironclad W for us. This one was very cool. Exploiting the orange pellets and the Sneko Eye. GG. And Dark Lommel. Thanks for the Prime sub and the 10 months of sub port. Meow, what Twitch chat? Has it been done? The spire sleepeth, and so shall I. Remember, you can't spell orange pellets without OP. Check this run out. So, we got uh, one, two, three in a row. Going to be going for four next, but before that happens, Twitch chat, it's going to be break time. I'm going to refill my legs, stretch my water. Upon my return, we'll do another run. And yes, FTL will be our second game today. So after our second Ironclad run, we'll play some FTL Faster Than Light. Back in a few, everybody. Don't go nowhere.
Oh. Oh. oh, shoot. <laughs> well, that's what I get for not muting the mic, huh? That's my bad. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Did not mean to do that, but uh, here we are. <laughs> Baylor, no, the mic. <laughs> Slingshot, thanks for the 11 months of support. <clears throat> he is human, folks. He is human. Normally a YouTube enjoyer, but still want to throw subs my way over here. Well, thank you. Too bad the clip contest is already over. And too bad Baylor was the one picking the winners. So, you know, I can cover that up. Whip Quazin, thank you so much for the uh, gifted sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Parks. You know, my father taught me that you should never belch before a lady. You must allow her to go first. Ninja Pears, thank you so much for the five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. And Locomotive, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. All right, do we take the random rare relic? It's pretty hard to say no to a random rare relic, the start of a clad run. We are fighting Hexy G as our act boss, and I do like some of the pathing options before us here, especially this one. I don't think a boss swap is conducive to this, but a rare relic certainly might be. Let's do the rare relic. Hmm. <laughs> Well, by Grabthar's hammer, what is savings? We made money. Except the shops are in weird spots. So I'm not sure that I want to go to a shop. And Smix, thanks for the hundred bits. Lose all golden. Hmm. All right, maybe we start out here, and then we have the option to go to the shop, a shopption. Or maybe we can stride on to the Burning Elite. We'll see. If we go to this shop, I only get to fight one Elite, which is pretty abysmal. And there's another Force shop later. Hmm. Seems like I'm going to go to one sh Elite either way. We could try to find a shop in a question mark room, but... Not sure that's wise. Maybe we can do two. There'll be a faint chance. Let's do two. Question mark rooms, that is. Don't think you knew before looking it up just now that old coin can't spawn in the shop. Kind of makes sense, right? Buying the old coin would be a little bit ridiculous. First card, Blood for Blood. I like Blood for Blood a lot going into Hexaghost. I can also see Second Wind being okay here. It can delete the burns from Hexaghost. That said, right at the start of the run, it looks like a attack card is vitally important. So I'll pick up the Blood. Blood for Blood. Can't quite kill with blood for blood next turn. Still is three cost. Bummer. Bummer. Hmm. 
blood potion though. Blood potion for blood potion. And uh oh, body slam, entrench, war cry. This is not it. Maybe I take a war cry just because it's not too, too bad. Card has some utility. You can separate cards that you don't want together. Set up an attack with Vuln. I guess I'll take one. Over skipping here. And then I sure hope we find a shop. Or else. I think I might be going to the shop. Feels like we want to bash. If I can kill next turn. We always draw two strikes. Let's bash this one then. This card does damage, therefore we're taking it. Flame Barrier can be nice too, especially against Texaghost. Overall, we absolutely did not get strong enough to fight the Burning Elite, so let's just put the thought of Burning Elite from our mind here. Though I could go this way. I think we'd rather just go to a shop here. With our extra cash. Although two shops, I don't know. I can't go to an Elite as we are, that's foolishness. Hmm. I don't like the way this act is laid out. I just don't. We'll take Sever Soul and go to the shop. Boat thingy is tempting. I really do like this relic as, a rare, as far as rare relics go. Get 18 block at the start of turn three. Is very good against the elites of Act One. As far as two cost attacks go, there's Uppercut and Carnage. Those are okay. Prismatic Shard is here. I'll take a boat thingy. I will take a boat thingy. <laughs> and we'll go to one more combat before this first elite here. Team is prudent. Now we have another shop with no value. I don't like this act one. Surely there had to be a better way. Also, ouch. Deal 20, they go to 19. That's not too bad. Ugh. Feel bad, though. Hmm. Okay, here's blood for blood. Kill one. Can't quite kill the other, but we can at least only take three. It will suffice. Butt's perfectly fine. Deals damage, puts a card back on top. I like it with the blood for blood. Recur the blood for blood. And our first elite is the three sentries. A fight that's not too bad. Definitely want to get tapped on turn one, make the blood for blood cheaper here.
and we have to do the same on turn two, no choice, which means Blood for Blood is free. In fact, next turn we can do Blood for Blood, Headbutt, War Cry, put the Defend on top, and Blood for Blood again. That's a great turn, if not for the fact that I have to take damage now. We could Gambler's Brew, get the Blood for Blood immediately, but then I cannot make it freeze, so whatever. How's it going, Happy Burrito? Hmm. <clears throat> Should have played Silver Soul there too, but it doesn't matter because it's a one shot with the Blood for Blood. <laughs> okay, I think things are decent enough at the moment. Maybe not so decent. Blood Potion's here, though. It's a solid 16 health. We also get Tori. If we would receive 5 or less unblocked attack damage, knock it down to 1. Very good for making Blood for Blood cheaper. Do I particularly want a Twin Strike? No, I would not say that I do. I'll skip these. Oops, all rare relics. What about this one, though? That's not a rare relic. That's a blue candle. Blue candle with the blood for blood does actually do something kind of interesting in that we can play Ascender's Bane to discount the blood for blood by one. That said, it's pretty likely that the blue key is better long term here. I'll take the blue key. And I'll upgrade, what, Warcry? Bash? I guess I'll upgrade Bash. Been seeing more Bash upgrades lately. It does a perfectly fine job. Hit points go up. Exhume. Get back an exhausted card. Don't have any good exhume targets right now, but taking the exhume would make it very easy to pick one. A disarm, a feed, an offering, anything like that. I'm hopeful that we can find something. Especially if we also get then a feel no pain on sale here in the shop. That said, can we beat the Hexaghost? I am a little worried currently. We don't have any strength at all. The Blood for Blood could do a lot of work, though. I guess I'll take some more fights. Or one more fight here. Try to get another potion, perhaps. Hey, this ain't too bad. Tori putting in big work here. Go for Wizard next. <laughs> yeah, the Blood for Blood will help. Okay, good. Ever headbutt first there? I think that was a reasonable choice, headbutt first. bother. It's only 23, huh? Well, that's on me. I did that. Uh, we kill next turn, so there's no need to play anything. No need to take one there. True Grit. That can exhaust stuff, although that does not help with killing Hexaghost. 
Actually, it sort of does, because it gets us back to the Blood for Blood faster. Blood for Blood is going to have to do all the work against Hexa here. And I might not have a Blood Potion, or we can pay the 56 gold to get a Relic. Given how scared I am of Hexa Ghost at this very moment, I think I might prefer to lose the money. I'll lose the money. Give up the blood for blood. What happens if you drink the potion now? Suspiciously, this is the one and I think only location that I'm not allowed to drink the blood potion. Mysterious. Have some money, sir. We get a shuriken. Okay, that helps quite a bit. Almost like the devs thought of that. Um, almost like the devs introduced Ranwid to the game without thinking of that and then got bug reports from players that they could drink the fruit juice and then had to manually fix it. I think that's closer to what happens. Surely that would never happen, right? <laughs> Who would do that? Who would do that? Who would do that? Not me, surely. What am I drinking today? We've got uh, Nixie Strawberry Hibiscus Sparkling Water. A good one. Tasty. Cannot block. Not fully. I'd rather take six hits anyway, because I want the blood for blood to be zero cost. So let's just go Sever Soul, lose three defense here. And strike. Now the blood for blood is cheap. Very well. Oh, excellent. We can headbutt the Blood for Blood. I was hoping. We can even Feel No Pain, Exhume, Warcry. Warcry to get the Blood for Blood. Let's play it again. Take only six here. Death, you die. Blood Pot or Gambler's Brew saves us. Otherwise, we're actually just right dead to this. No need to die, though. No, there's no need for us to die here. Fortunately, Tori doesn't reduce the damage from the burn, so this would be, indeed be a true death. Gamble four. Yeah, we do get the true grid. Good. <clears throat> Buff turn here, and then hopefully dead next turn. When I said dead next turn, I guess I meant myself. Looks like we have to use the blood potion now. Just a little bit short here. Okay. I'm fine with that. We live Hexagos. That was the main concern here. We even get a potion back. Uh, but that's why we had to give Ran with the money and not the potion, basically. Now we can take a Fiend Fire and feel good about it, or a Corruption and feel good about it. I think I prefer a Fiend Fire with the Shuriken and the Feel No Pain. 
but these are both very good. Yeah, both of these are very good. Triple boop, 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 boop. Thanks for the 40 months, four f metric years of the frickin' Hexaghost. Let's take that fiend fire and pray for Sneko. Sneko delivered. It's a good Sneko deck. Two cost, three cost, two cost, two cost. Yeah, we want Sneko for sure. That means we have two additional cards each turn, but all our cards are random cost. Zero, one, two, or three. With equal probability. Or at least equal probability in theory. The whole in practice thing is a bit different. Oh, I like this path. Fire into fire into triple elite here is quite nice. Don't really want to run into an early shop as we have as little money as you can at the start of an act, basically. What would I prefer is the next card reward from here? Something with area damage. Immolate or Whirlwind, probably. Still a weak point in our defenses. Hopefully we'll be okay, though. Ah. Except for the strike, that was a completely normal cost hand. I was a little confused for a moment. Or not confused, rather. Oh, and now we have a good Exhume target. I didn't even talk about that, but Fiend Fire with Exhume is very good. I guess his Corruption is, too, also. There's plus, but with Sneko Eye, surely we can do better than a Twin Strike plus. I think so. What about Cleave? That is AoE. That's what I asked for. I'm going to grab that, actually. It's not ideal, but... It does help fill the role. And therefore, I think it has merit. Ah, oh, bummer. I can't do Feel No Pain and Fiend Fire here. Boo. But I can do Feel No Pain, Defend, Defend. Or Feel No Pain, Defend, Bash, Block Pot. I like Feel No Pain, Defend, Bash, Block Pot quite a bit. Let's do that. Bash Fiend Fire doesn't kill it, I don't believe. Pick one. Can you cleanse the Sneko Confusion with a souvenir? Not with a souvenir, no. You can cleanse it with orange pellets. But only with orange pellets. There's no other way to prevent that confusion effect. Pretty good fight. We do get a potion back. And there's the Whirlwind. I'll take that one as well. So now we have the AoE we need. For Act 2 here, and just in time for Triple Cultist Fight. Definitely happy we invested in the area damage. Good fight. Hmm. 
Clothesline is barely passable. I'd prefer an uppercut here. Strongly prefer uppercut. Maybe if the clothesline said plus. Uh-oh. But my face, though... Hmm. It's a pretty spectacularly bad draw. I'm gonna have Swift Potion here. Otherwise, we're staring at quite a bit of damage on that turn. Take 9 isn't so, so bad. Didn't get the Feel No Pain in play, though. Really stings. Um, is there anything I can do about this? I don't think so. We just have to deal damage now. Defend Fiend Fire or just Fiend Fire? I'm gonna Fiend Fire. We have to kill the Centurion. Okay, we do have two potions. We're offered an Upgraded Battle Trance. Very powerful card normally. Less good with the Sneko Eye, but I still think actually worth including. As if we draw four cards, one of them is likely to be one or zero cost. We also get offered Colorless Potion, Speed Potion. Kind of mediocre potions. Maybe the Colorless Potion is better than the Weak Potion, though. Especially against uh, Book of Stabbing, potentially. Might want to rest one time, but I definitely want to upgrade Fiend Fire. No, I want to upgrade Fiend Fire and Whirlwind as we go into the elites here. But those two upgrades should cover our bases such that no matter who we face, it won't be too, too bad. Cleric is here to remove a card. I'd love to dunk a strike. Be gone, strike. I guess that's true. With the Tori, the weak potion against the Book of Stabbing was pretty good. And a tiny chest. Sure. Hello. Colorless Potion says, what's up? Apotheosis, Dramatic Entrance. Wow. Really like the Apotheosis here. Upgrading the full deck. That would let me kill the Mad Gremlin with Sever Soul. We do Feel No Pain, Defend, Sever Soul. And then... I have one energy left for... I could do War Cry, actually, and then Headbutt. Whereas if I Dramatic Entrance... We actually guarantee kill both gremlins. I block for five. Plus nine. Take one. Take one guaranteed with dramatic entrance. And gain a point of strength. Alright, I'll take that. Good. Very good. Now you must die. Wait. Good fight. We get the Art of War giving us energy if we play no attacks on our turn. Get another Whirlwind if I want one. I don't think I do. And we're down to 10% potion chance, which is kind of, si kind of silly. 
I guess Sentinel is okay, right? With uh, True Grit and Seversoul and Fiendfire and the desire for corruption. I think a Sentinel. Chosen's not too bad with the Captain's Wheel, so I'm not too afraid here. Either Feel No Pain or Bash. Lots of free block. I'd rather bash. Good fight. And there it is, instant payoff with the Sentinel, because guess what? We have Corruption now. That means we can make all of our skills free. You heard me, all of them. Which then, of course, also gives us block. Ow. All right. I admit, weak potion would have been pretty good here. I admit it. Not much I can do about this. We can play Battle Trance, but then I probably can't play anything. Can't keep getting away with it. That's true. I can't. Factually. Ow. Now we have a Gremlin Horn, giving us an energy and a card draw whenever anything dies. One of my favorite relics to get an act to. And since we already have a Corruption, I will take another Sentinel. For sure Z's here. Got another potion, somehow. Neko, my nemesis? How's it going, friend? I think you will find that uh, I don't really care about being confused here given that I am already confused. Another very good fight. Shockwave, great with corruption. Welcome. And I don't feel rich enough for a shop. Let's fight another elite. Given that uh, with the Gremlin Horn, it really ought not to be so bad. For example, we can cleave. Headbutt the cleave, draw the cleave again, play the cleave again. Feels good. You go on top. That's my horn. Hmm. Seems fine. Bye. 
Get Ancient T set. Two energy on turn one after visiting a rest site. And for ultimate block engine, here's Second Wind. Exhausting all non-attack cards in our hand, just like Seversoul does. Getting block for each one. Gotta love it with Sneko Eye. I guess I can upgrade the Feel No Pain, maybe the Shockwave. Although currently the Shockwave is a good exhume target. Let's do Feel No Pain first. Yeah, especially against the Bronze Automaton, actually. Really good exhume target. I play Sever Soul, I activate Shuriken, but I lose both Sentinels. I think I'd rather do that on a big Whirlwind turn. Wait. Second win and whirlwind for three? Seems decent. Not great. But decent. Yes. Yes. Do I just fiend fire? I lose so much of my block if I do that. But I do so much damage. Hmm. Antomeko, thanks for the 17 months and the prime sub. Just exhaust our way to another win. What a fear pot, and then fiend fire. I think that's good. We still have three turns to find a kill somehow. Yeah, here's the whirlwind turn. Much better. Eight times seven to all. Now we're talking. Uh, and then get back Fiendfire. And do this again. Okay, that was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. GG. The Automaton is toast. We're offered Fiend Fire number two, Limit Break, or Corruption. This definitely feels like a run that could really use a Limit Break. Although currently our only form of strength scaling is the Shuriken. Even that could be enough to get started here. I don't need two Corruptions. I don't think I need two Fiend Fires. Although, actually, two Fiend Fires ain't bad. It does become a problem in boss fights, because we can't just delete the whole deck. I'm taking a limit break. I think we need to scale our strength higher here to win. As for a boss relic, we either take Mark of Pain, giving us more energy per turn, but adding wounds to the draw pile. With Second Wind and Fiend Fire and True Grit and Sever Soul, I don't fear those wounds too much. We could take Black Blood for more healing, or we could take Empty Cage, Dunk Two Cards, the opposite of the Mark of Pain. I'm pretty happy with the Mark of Pain. I think more energy is going to go a really long way. And like I said, those wounds could actually be exhaust fuel for the deck, potentially. Here in Act 3, we must face our Burning Elite, so that does limit our pathing initially. Might as well go to this shop then, I think. Yeah, it's kind of a weak act overall. We get two elites, one shop, basically no rest sites at all. And a lot of regular combats. Oh well. I'll allow it. I think we already saw the medical kit, so there's no chance for medical kit to save us here. How do I highlight the path like that? I use a mod called Map Marks. Exclamation point map has a link to it there. 
But yeah, you cannot make the uh, unmodded game do that. Ow. Alright. Um, this is fine, I think. I guess. Just play the Whirlwind. No problem, right? Currently, there's no problem. With the Limit Break, surely a Heavy Blade Plus is going to be a great damage delivery system. We just need to find the strength. Oh wait, there is Medical Kit. I lied about Medical Kit, by the way. Uh, there's also Fossilized Helix here. Might just take Medical Kit. Does seem kind of nice. I do like Helix a lot. Very expensive, though. Dual Wield is a Sneko card. Maybe we buy this Dual Wield. Yeah, Dual Wield can do some broken things. Although, unupgraded is not that good. Distilled Chaos... Does Distilled Chaos reshuffle if there are zero cards in the draw? Yes, it does. Have to be really careful with the Distilled Chaos in this deck, because if any of the top cards are Fiendfire, we could accidentally delete our entire hand. Hmm. This is a tough call. I do support the Helix Monkeys here. I think I'm going to go Helix. But one wonders what else could have been here. Ooh, another rare relic. I'll fight for it. Get on, nerds. I got Feel No Pain Corruption turn one. What do you got? Freaking nothing, that's what. Use our buffer on turn one. Perfectly fine. Saves ten already. All right, we can go to two strength, then exhume it, go to four strength. Alternately, no, we can do better than that. We can go to eight strength here. Let's see, with 8 strength, the base damage of Heavy Blade is 54, which will be 70-something. So you're already dead. Go Strike, Blood for Blood, Limit Break, Exhume, Limit Break. Doubting the Limit Break pick now? Hope not. Good. Very good. Now we're immune to weaken with Ginger. And I do like the idea of armaments allowing us to upgrade cards sometimes. Sure. Still missing the really juicy stuff, but uh, what can you do? Not much. Zoom any card.
Behold one strength. Sentinel on top? Oh well. This is fine. Good fight. Unupgraded heavy blade? I don't don't think so. Don't think we need that. I would take another upgraded one, but not an unupgraded one. Oh boy. Reptomancer. If I play Limit Break here, I keep Buffer. That's worth it. We can still exhume it if we want to. Hopefully we can kill some daggers on this turn. Yes, indeed. We can kill some daggers. Beautiful. Riptomancer. Now we have Gambling Chip. We can discard any number of cards on turn one. And draw that many cards again. That's pretty spicy. Double Tap with Corruption is also pretty spicy. And I think I'm going to lose the Distilled Chaos, because I don't trust it with the Fiend Fire. Here's Mind Bloom. We can get another Rare Relic. Or we could upgrade all of our cards in exchange for no longer being able to heal. I don't think I like that. Let's fight a boss. How many Rare Relics are left? Well over 20. Quite a few. Lots. Revelier, thanks for the 42 months of support. Lime crushed. Aaron's Ashes, that's a very good one. Every time we exhaust a card, we'll deal three damage to every enemy. We're also offered Feel No Pain plus number two, or Disarm, which is great with Exhume. That said, I think considering the current deck, we're taking another Feel No Pain here. Yoink. Wish I could take both. It's all coming together now. Ashes does some spicy stuff. The damage. 36 damage in the first fight. Evolve? Hmm, probably not actually. I guess we do have enough statuses, it's okay. Who's our first act boss? Don't do Decca. All right, fine. I'll take it. I'll take it. And we do get Centennial Puzzle. First time we lose health, draw three. A bit of a non-bow with a helix, but that's fine. 
Wish we could go to this question mark room for tiny chests, but we have to go to the Burning Elite here. energy next turn. I realize we lose our helix for one here, but it's fine. So Tiny Chest did nothing this run. That's correct. Pretty typical Tiny Chest, quite frankly. Yeah, unfortunately typical. So much block. The fruit juice is back. Power through is here, making me really wish we had taken a uh, medical kit, but I'll still take it. I don't know if this fruit juice is smart. I mean, we are gonna get another potion. Let's lose the ancient potion. We're definitely going to get another potion. We have four combats coming up. Yeah. How would I change Tiny Chest to be less restrictive or more consistent? I think I might have it say, every time you open a treasure chest, gain something. Maybe gain 30 or 50 gold. Maybe gain another common relic. Might do something like that. Uh, what it originally did was give you a little bit of money immediately. I think it was 30 gold. And then it improved your chances of finding treasure chests in question mark rooms, which is extremely nebulous, unfortunately. So it was really of questionable use then, too, but... Sometimes it's even worse now. Oh, your poor strength nemesis, huh? Well, what if I just exhumed Fiendfire? Blocked for a bazillion. Thank goodness for buffer. Two damage per combat. The boot from the Nemesis. Classic. Barricade from the Nemesis. Less classic. Very good, though, in this case, with Sneko Eye. With our massive block generation from Double Feel No Pain. Barricade is absolutely enormous here. The good kind of enormous.
51 per combat. No need for these. All right, last combat before the boss gauntlet will be the Writhing Mass. Writhing Mass can definitely cause trouble, potentially able to curse us here. This is fine. I cannot full block you, so I'll just take the hit on the buffer here. Perfectly acceptable. Even better. Right, I will gamble. Better. Much better, actually. If I played another attack here, we could get cursed, so I'll stop at the 42 hit. Please and thank you. Gambler's Brew, very good. Shrug Plus looks good. When you've got corruption, there's no such thing as too many shrug it offs, I say. We'll lose the strength potion. I don't think we're going to need it where we're going. And we do have to recall here get our final key. All righty then. It's a hell of a turn one. Barricade yet. I can play three attacks. Let's do that. Blood for blood, strike, whirlwinds. Go to two strength. Already full blocking. We can stop there. And then something like Headbutt, Double Tap, Sever Soul. Don't play the Fiend Fire yet. Play Strike, too. Thing to exhume? Yeah, the shockwave. Ah, 
Ash is already up to 375 total damage. Seems a bit ridiculous. boss fight down no problem at all with all these powers now GG Deca and Donu who's next bird nerd or slimbo Limbo Jimbo. No, it's Bird Nerd. It's Bird Nerd. Not the greatest turn one. I guess we just take the Art of War here. Definitely playing our Feel No Pains, because we have Barricade coming up. I don't have any way to weaken... or uh, any way to lower the strength of the Awakened One which could be a problem. But I imagine won't be a problem. You go, uh, hmm. Yeah, you go back on top, I think. This might be a fight where playing Corruption is not a good idea. I like the idea of playing second win here to get rid of all this stuff. The wound, the corruption, the defend. If I don't play corruption, I can keep true gritting over and over again for more block. Seems wise. And we get a bird. Many cards deleted on that turn. Lots of block accumulated, too. But then, garbage. What if I exhume Fiendfire, delete it again? Get rid of more garbage. Let's do that. Ready to use to lose true grit just yet. Okay, this looks pretty comfortable. We have a hundred plus block, as well as power through second wind I'm doing work here. Two hundred block. Oh. Now we draw the exact same hand every single turn. Seems pretty strong.
GG, bird nerd. No relics for us to set up here, and we just take the W and leave. Lots of block left over. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this exhaustion? Karen's Ashes has dealt over 600 damage, an average of nearly 80 per combat. And I imagine we'll only go up from here. On to Act 4. Yeah, poor Tiny Chest. Never got to do nothing, but it's set up for next run, so that's nice. Let's upgrade armaments. Since we're behind on so many upgrades here. A real Dark Embrace shows up. Get in here. Pretty happy with the current potions, although there might be an argument for Liquid Memories. I imagine I just remove a strike now. Yeah, I think we just remove a strike now. Could take Bloodletting if I wanted to. I don't. Have I ever bottled armaments? Probably. Wouldn't call it a particularly good bottle, but I'm sure it's happened at least once. Okay, headbutting the True Grit seems like a reasonable choice here. Next turn could be bad, but that's what the Gambler's Brew is for. If I battle trance, I can't Gambler's Brew. So I think we Gambler's Brew first, maybe play Power Through, then gamble everything in my hand. That sounds like a good idea. Except for the battle trance, that is. Hmm. Wow, oh, that's bad. Surprisingly so. I guess I'm just going to Sever Soul for block. Thirty-five. So we'll take twenty. At least we draw more cards. Now we're fine, though. Could be fine. Again. Okay, we get a potion back. I feel pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty good.
This sounds tough. Multi hit first is no good. Yeah, that sucks. Okay. Can't buffer the big hit. Even with Liquid Memories on, shrug. I don't think it happens. We have no feel no pain here. That's a real bummer. At least Tori prevents most of the damage. We'll also draw off the puzzle in a moment. Garbage. I think I just pass. Can't even play three attacks, huh? Maybe if I battle trance, but then we're losing all the good block. I don't think so. Let's take the hit. Oh, we get 18 block here, which is good. I think the dupe pont goes on to feel no pain plus. Yoink. Six, that's fine. Don't double tap the feed fire. But maybe do single tap. No, we should second win, right? Okay, time to start building strength. Keep the Sever Soul for now. Uh, Liquid Memories Fiend Fire now seems pretty good. We delete all of this. We do a ton of damage. We draw a lot of cards. We make a ton of block. Keep the important attack cards. Shouldn't need any more vulnerable than this. Not that I could apply it anyway. Yeah, Liquid Memory is the theme fire now. We get over 100 block just from that Fiend Fire. Guess what? I can exhume it again if I want to. Although I think I'll be exhuming the... Limit Break here. Let's go to 8 strength. The heavy blade does real damage. Looking good, though. Very good. 90 incoming, but I have more block than that. GG. Mr. Hart. GG. Not too shabby. The Sneko gets there.
going off. Corruption's power once again. That and the power of uh, 12 block per exhausted card. Just ridiculous. GG. GG. Nice 3,000 point run there for y'all. But now what, Twitch chat? The spire sleeps, and so shall I. A couple of very, very good ironclad runs. I'm quite happy with those, leaving the streak at four after today. The roguelite action will keep going, but the spire, alas, is done for the day. I'm going to be switching things over now to FTL, faster than light. It's also time for me to take a break, Twitch chat. So, I'm going to leave you on the FTL main menu while I take a quick break. Yeah, make sure to mute this time. While I quick take a quick break, fart loudly, and uh, refill the water. When I return, there'll be some FTL faster than light. I like that the auto moderators tried to stop you from posting that, Steve with a B. Auto mod has my back. <laughs> the auto mod will not allow my secrets to be aired. Hmm. Unless I allow them, of course. Blasphemy. All right, Twitch chat, back in a couple minutes. Please enjoy the cozy tunes of FTL Faster Than Light. When I return, we're going to play a new run with a random ship on hard difficulty in this delightful, now 12 year old roguelite by Subset Games. How is FTL 12 years old now? How am I old now? Why I am so old. All right, Twitch chat, back in a few.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. You are indeed in time here, Words X3, for some FTL faster than light. We're going to be playing a hard... run with a random ship here. The Basilisk. Ooh, we get the Mantis B. One of the stronger ships and one of the only ships with a four-person teleporter. Been a long while since I've had the pleasure of playing with this powerful of a ship. Hard unmodded. That's correct. No mods here. It's meant to be words, words, words. Okay. Actually, thank you for the correction there. I'll try to remember that for next time. Jester's chest hair. Thanks so much for the prime sub in the 33 months. Uh, we are tweaking this. All right, if you'd like to be part of the fateful crew here in FTL, you can now redeem channel points through the Twitch interface to uh, name one of our mantids to start. Grunt. Grunt, welcome aboard. Lex is a phoenix, thanks so much for the five months. Got back from choir just in time to drop your sub and enjoy FTL. What a good day. And Alex, welcome aboard. So Grunt and Alex and their loyal boarding drone will be embarking upon a journey on hard mode here of FTL. The data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. We'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector, they say. The goal here in FTL is to traverse eight sectors with maps like this, um, fighting enemies and acquiring scrap upgrades along the way. FTL is ultimately a ship-to-ship -ship combat roguelite, with the main gameplay focusing on battles with your ship here. There are 28 different ships to play as in FTL Advanced Edition. This is one of the more unusual ones, and arguably one of the strongest ships in the game. Starting with level 2 shields already, which is crazy, as well as a 4-pad teleporter, although only 2 crew, and a boarding drone, which we can use to deal with automated ships. So we're going to start out by exploring Sector 1 here. Bit of an odd layout, I guess there's only one reasonable first jump. Medic Bay on a boarding ship can feel bad, it's true. So we encounter a slave trader here. A somewhat threatening fight. The goal in each combat of FTL here is to either A, deplete the enemy hull to zero with your weapons. Wait a minute, we have no weapons. Uh, or B, kill all the enemy crew aboard the enemy ship. If you kill the crew, then you might get a better reward as well. The enemy ship has a missile launcher, so we're going to employ our defense drone. And I'm just going to take a quick peek at what's on board the enemy ship here. Just two rockmen. Okay. So 
so we should win the one-on-one -on -one if we fight them. For the two-on-one, -on -one, I suppose. Two-on-two. -two. We'll beat them, I believe. Or at least come pretty close. Might want to get out of here just for safety. Yeah, I think so. The defense drone is good, but it's not foolproof, as you can see. So we scan the ship, but detect no life signs. The slaves died in the fight, so we don't get an additional warrior here. But we do get enough scrap to get started. 20 scrap ain't too bad. How much impact does the starting ship have on the entire run? A very large impact. Yeah, a very large impact. The starting ship affects your starting crew, starting systems, the number of weapon and drone slots you have, uh, and a few other things. Often your starting equipment ends up part of your end game equipment, so it's, it's entirely reasonable to use one or more of your starting weapons for the entire run. Can you jump with autopilot? No, you have to have a human in the cockpit to jump. Or a, a, a living crew in the cockpit to jump. Not necessarily a human, of course. It is possible to leave enemies behind, or to leave crew members behind when jumping. You'll get a warning if you're attempting to do that. So are we like a pirate or a scavenger or what? You get to have a little bit of control over exactly what you conceptualize yourself as. This is indeed a pretty good bribe, right? Free burst laser mark one. Although we could get a double reward for killing them. And I don't really need a burst laser mark one. Although having the first weapon is a good idea. Let's take out Zoltan shields, for example. No deal. I refuse your puny offer. That's right, 25 scrap if we sell it. Pirates are all dead, leaving the ship dead in space. We get five more scrap than the reward. And we find a rebel scout. We can either destroy the ship and salvage it or delay the pursuing fleet. I forget if that's one or two jumps extra. Let's take the double reward. We get another 10 scrap, three fuel, one drone part. Okay, so we got 15 scrap, 3 fuel, 1 drone part versus the weapon. I'm not unhappy with that. There is a shop coming up, although I'm going to jump around. Forward scout of the rebel fleet. Yeah, they're not going to be able to do much.
once one of these two humans dies, the cockpit will be lured out of their... Uh, out of the cockpit. The, the pilot will be lured from the cockpit, um, which prevents them from charging FTL. Death. Still one step ahead of the fleet. Yeah, this is a, a crazy good ship. Really like the ship. And starting with two shields is just so safe. Let's upgrade the sensors and maybe the piloting, too. Yeah, let's get that as well. That'll give us a chance to dodge shots when we are aboard the enemy ship, as well as allow us to see what kind of crew we're facing without having to make a detour on the way to the teleporter. Sure, I'm going to grab some early fuel here. I usually find boarding runs don't struggle too much with fuel, but it's being offered at a good deal means we can trade some away later. Why not? Have I unlocked the crystal ships? Yeah, I've unlocked uh, all of the, the ships on this save file. And here we can trade one of that fuel for four missiles. I don't actually need missiles, but why not? Do you get extra stuff from not destroying the ship? Sometimes, yeah. You do get slightly higher rewards on average. Finally, after months of waiting, someone has fallen into our trap. They have their own boarding drone. We could do boarding drone versus boarding drone strats here. Boarding drones are going to keep coming. Actually, not sure what to do about that. We're safe from this enemy ship. For now. At least it's weapons, but it will continue to send drones after us. We could send our own boarding drone for the cost of one drone part. That would distract their crew, maybe cause some system damage. Give him some spice. Right in the cockpit, huh? Yeah, we lose our drone to not too much advantage, as far as I can tell. They don't have a clone bay. I thought they did for a second. Okay, let's just board their ship then. I think this is our chance. There we go. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship. Two mantises are not very good at repairing, unfortunately, so it's going to take some teamwork to fix the ship up. Having only two crew almost makes me want to prioritize an oxygen system upgrade. Upgrade the O2. Doors are a good upgrade as well.
soundtrack of this game is just too, too good. Gotta love it. Timeless, almost. I like that we only have 2% dodge chance with uh, no one in the, in the cockpit at the moment. It could happen. <clears throat> it might just happen. Someday. Now we can jump. A ship refitted for transport rather than combat. If such a ship is killed without destroying the hull, you'll get an additional reward, and that's perfect for us. Demand their surrender. Three humans will not cut it. Both of these drones that it has are anti-drone drones, so they would shut down our boarding drone if it tried to attack them. Yeah, an actual ship designed for transport. Very fitting uh, layout here, especially with the, the system repair drone, too. Hmm. The ship was carrying information about the surrounding beacons. That means we get a map reveal. Probably the worst reward we could get, but it's better than nothing, I guess. That'll tell us where we can find ships in the rest of the sector. Or where we can find asteroid fields, or suns, or pulsars, things that we should absolutely not jump into. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that reveal. These are all traps. I will never surrender my crew to slavers. Even if the slavers have a burst two and mind control? Uh-oh. Am I playing no pause as well? I am not. I'm gonna use the boarding drone here. We will never surrender one of our crew to slavers. It's actually a very fitting module for slavers to have, right? This is spooky. Do I just board the enemy ship and hope for the best here? I think so. an engine hit. If that had hit the teleporter, we could be in real trouble here, but I think we're okay. That's upgraded mind control? What the heck? Okay, good. We scan the ship and detect no life signs. It appears the slaves died in the fight. We strip the ship and prepare to jump. Nice footwork, Alex. Well done. Run, Alex, run. Like your life depends on it, which it did. Still no additional crew, unfortunately. One of the few situations where I would I would really appreciate buying an additional crew, even at full price. What happens if you board an automated ship? 
then I hope you're holding your breath. Because there's no air on that ship. I'm going to take an engine upgrade. It's only 10 scrap. Very cheap. Hmm. Might go to that shop, too. Another slaver. Okay. Maybe here we can get crew. I see they have a clone bay. And a bomb launcher. Bomb launcher's kind of spooky. Oh, it's just a stun bomb. It's fine. Oh, that's not scary. kill this mantis. There we go. We need them both to die around the same time. bombs. Stop the repair. I think this is fine. Could kill them both and then kill the clone bit before either responds here. There we go. You find a number of slaves in the cargo hold. They look at you questioningly, and one asks if they're to be released. We can choose the species of our third crew member here, Mantis, Rockman, or NG, with all three being pretty valid options. Triple Mantis, since we have a three-slot boarding uh, teleporter, is pretty good. Or having an NG to hold down the fort is also very reasonable. Thing with the Rockman, actually, is the Rockman is flexible. And good at dealing with fires, although I still think I'd prefer an NG pilot. Let's get the one NG. Take an NG pilot. Mallet. Verify primary objective is to defeat rebels, re-establish peace, and murder a lot of people along the way, yes. Never met a rock man who could touch his toes. Alright, let's open up naming for our third crew member here. Who would like to be an NG? Red shirt. An ominous name for the pilot. But okay. Go here and not to the shop. Farm more materials out of sector one. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade the 
teleporter as well, just in case. Good thing to have upgraded. Um, thanks for the four months of support. Zoltan Shields, huh? I guess I have no need of your services. Can we beat Zoltan Shields at all? Nope. We can't do anything to this ship at the moment. Had we gotten the Burst Laser Mark 1, we could kill this ship. Likewise, though, this ship can't do anything to us either, so kind of funny. Decent training opportunity, uh, perhaps, but no, well... We'll just say whatever. Mail you later, nerd. Looks like we have to go now. This is going to get overtaken, I think, in one jump. So, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Refugees, hail! Three missiles for true drone parts. Well, drone parts do something, missiles don't. I'll take the drone parts, thank you, and goodbye. Would we like to go to Uncharted Nebula or Uncharted Nebula? Go to the top one, then I can choose purple or red for the next sector. I feel like the Uncharted Nebula is great this time of year. We can visit more locations in purple sectors. It'll cost us more fuel, but, well, guess what? We... We have lots of fuel. Satellite defense system has gone haywire. NG can do this, right? Yeah, NG has a blue option here. So some events, especially distress beacon events in FTL, have what are called blue options. If you see an option that is in blue text, that means that it gives you either a better reward or a guaranteed reward or some combination thereof, usually. Or at least better odds than the normal options. They're, they're better. Remotely repair the targeting system. Your crew member is able to remotely fix the glitch, giving us some stuff. Vaith, thanks for the prime sub. Yeah, fire on it from a distance with what exactly? Well, don't worry about that. Sometimes blue gets you out of a fight you would want for resources. I think there's one or two instances where the blue option can be worse. But almost always the blue is better. Sure, let's go to another distress beacon. Can you lead us to our destination? Asks the innocent civilian. Sure, where are you going? Next sector? Really? I guess it's not in a nebula. Interesting that that put it in the next sector. Normally that would be in the same sector. Huh. Oh dear. We jump into a sector of the nebula beset by a plasma storm. An automated rebel scout stationed at the beacon moves to attack. Has no shields, but what does that matter? Hmm. Okay, so we can escape from this fight, no problem. Trying to win this fight seems challenging, although the boarding drone can definitely do it. No, boarding drone does this easy. Although we'll have to depower the boarding drone to power up the shields periodically, it's a bit awkward. Okay, weapons first makes it a lot easier. Okay, this is not bad. See the charge on the thing here. 
This is not very fun. <laughs> We can no longer take damage from it. It'll never repair the weapons because there's a breach from where the drone got in. So this is a good opportunity to train our uh, our uh, crew here if we want to. But we have to turn on the engines for that. That said, I don't usually like hanging around for a long time in fights unne unnecessarily for training. going to take a long time this fight. So now the weapons are down, we can stay like this permanently. The boarding drone is going to break the weapon system. That's going to cause one point of hull damage to the enemy ship. And then they're going to do the same thing to the piloting and engines. The enemy ship is going to automatically repair the piloting and engines, but not their weapons. Again, because there's a breach in the weapons room. Yeah, as Killer Sheep says, if you force yourself to min-max the crew training in this game, you can end up waiting a long time. Uh, there is a cheat engine that you can get for this game that can allow you to access uh, speed up, which can make that a lot less painful. So if you find yourself deeply compelled to do it, I would, I would recommend at least making it faster for yourself. As you did go and chat. That's life. Can we teleport the boarding drone back from the ship? No, we can't. There's no way to get it onto our ship. To get something that is like a boarding drone, but on our ship, we need what's called an anti-personnel drone, which is a separate type of drone. Has basically the same stats as the boarding drone. Off work for the weekend? Well, that's good. Yeah, it would be really nice if there had been a uh, speed-up option in the vanilla FTL, but it's not too, too bad as it is. Gat the body walker's happy to be here live? Good. Get him, boarding drone. Bra, boarding drone gives his life for the cause. A boom. Although we do get a drone part back, perhaps that's our friend boarding drone. All right. After all of that, we can finally leave. That experience made me want to upgrade our reactor. We have 11 power bars. Let's go 12. That way I'll have one more power to work with if we jump into another ion storm. Ugh. Rebel auto ship. Defending a station. Is this the one with a separate... No, this has got adjoining rooms. Okay, cool. So we can just use the boarding drone again. more safely this time. Same deal here, except it's got more systems to break, so it should die faster. This will be more of an opportunity for training, then. 
we can't stop it from shooting at us as reliably. Cool. Please don't break that. Finally, the weapons are being taken out here. Didn't get all that much training because the mind control has been messing with us. So let's all be in the mid bay for a minute. The mind control is about to come back. There it is. Kill the NG though. Isn't too painful. Fourteen scrap from the ship, and in the station, we get the other kind of drone, the anti-personnel drone. So now we can have one drone aboard our ship, one board drone aboard the enemy ship. Although with only two drone slots, I can't actually use it without swapping it out here. Note that the anti-personnel drone actually takes less power than the boarding drone, presumably because you can control it easier when it's on your own ship. It's kind of cool. Nothing but static. Does it take drone parts to have the anti-personnel drone stay home? You need to... Spend one drone part to create the anti-personnel drone, but after that, you do not need to spend another drone part uh, each time you jump. It's just in your ship, and you can activate and deactivate it at will without spending extra parts. Only if the drone gets destroyed by invaders or fire or something do you have to spend a new drone part. I think if you swap it out of a drone slot, the one won't get destroyed. The depowered one gets destroyed. Seems likely that would go away. But I don't actually know that for sure. That's right, and I think actually drones are immune to fire. Smuggler trying to stay away from beacons. They're going to have an extra reward if killed. Couldn't be bad unless the hacking hits something problematic here. Just see what it hits before I make some choices. Drones. Okay, get on board the ship right the heck now. Go straight into the cockpit. That means we're going to get hit by a missile, I think. Unless, no, let's shoot that down. Excellent, we get Kriz! This was a prisoner transport. A single survivor offers to join our crew in exchange for their freeman. Freedom. Gordon Freedom. Welcome, Chris. Merry Charismas. Dinky human. 
Okay, a stinky human is still good uh, cannon fodder. Mommy. Mommy Kriz. Yes, you heard right, chat. Mommy. Prepare to chase them. Ah, we get disoriented. We lose a little bit of jump time. That's fine. Well, maybe not fine, but that's acceptable. I should be able to make one more. Actually, it won't be that big a deal, right? If I have to go to the exit beacon, diving is fine. Yeah, diving is fine in a nebula. It's definitely going to be a dive. I don't know what I was thinking. So let's go one, two, three. Three missiles for three more drone parts. You got it. That's right, Nebula Exit Beacons also don't have an event, so it's really a mostly just upside here. Alright, boarding drone, get in there. Okay, good. Breaching the engines means this will never get away. I think that was only a threat if we breached into an empty room or the weapons, and I don't know that it ever targets empty rooms. But we must wait a little while again while we take out this ship, of course. Unless it just gets away? Oh. <laughs> well, that sucks. Okay, bye. Not the doubled fleet pursuit. Oh, no. Oh, no. That means we get caught by the Rebel Fleet here in the Nebula, but that's not so big a problem. Not really. Normally the Rebel Elites are supported by an anti-ship battery, which is pretty spooky, but... We don't have to deal with that. Because we're in a Nebula. So I might actually just take some dodge training. So good, so good. Here we go. To the Mantis homeworlds, I like it. How fitting. We've entered a poorly charted area of space that's known to be home to the Mantis. Ensure your whole plating is up to scratch and that you have enough fuel in the tank to make it through. Here's our escort quest. Very far away, it seems, but we can make it over there. Let's heal up red shirt real quick. So enemy targeting isn't purely random, at least not on hard mode. There is an actual um, prioritization that the enemies use. And then it's random kind of on top of that. It's like something something along the lines of 
50% chance to shoot at a random room, 50% chance to shoot at the priority room, or something like that. Um, and the exact conditions on your ship determine what room gets targeted by the AI. So there are criteria for them shooting at oxygen or piloting versus criteria for shooting at weapons or shields. Although I don't know those criteria. That's a lot of mantises. Please enjoy the vacuum of space. Thanks. Break my engines. Yeah, exactly. As as Rella says, if your oxygen level is low, then the AI, the AI might shoot at oxygen. And that can lead to, for those who are doing things like really long, hard wind streaks, you may want to do things like strategically lower your oxygen so that your O2 gets targeted instead of your shields uh, or things like that, which is kind of fun. Matter quite a bit for certain ships, especially the stealth B, I think. Uh, being able to, imp yeah, stealth B strats, as, as Stoffy says. Did not fight a war to let a single Federation ship shatter our dreams of a better galaxy. Enemy ship with a med bay could be a little tough here. I think overall we're just fine. Please send two mantises into the med bay. They can kill one guy in the med bay. shooting. 32 scrap. That's a really good reward. This early on. I believe we want to upgrade the med bay once we get to 35 scrap, as there is an event here in sec in the Mantis homeworlds requiring an upgraded med bay. The Kazakh Pleth Killick ship event. If we could get that this early, that'd be great. Uh oh. This ain't Kazak. A rebel automated scout has been stationed here. Prepare for a fight. How are you here, sir? You are going to die. You forgot to shields. Now you're on fire. Oh, that dodge. Defense drone failed us, but red shirt didn't. Should have the uh, engine person, man. Yes, take that missile out. Excellent. Oh no, our weapons. Anything but the weapons. 
can't upgrade the ship well here. Okay. You arrive in just in time to see an unusually well-armed NG ship destroying a small pirate craft. Teleporter signal is detected. Intruder on deck. A young mantis in a charred uniform is teleported onto the deck, begging for sanctuary from the NG. You can side with the fugitive or offer them up for a bounty. Either of choice has a chance to be a trap, so it's kind of like a blind coin flip. I would like another Mantis. Side with the Fugitive. Nope. It was a trap. Also hacking. Also, three Mantis in a, on an NG ship. Yikes. They have a Defense Drone Mark II. Sensors are hacked. That's fine. How do I deal with uh, this, though? I can't use the boarding drone at all here. Spooky. Guess we just teleport on board and try to overwhelm them with numbers? How do I deal with a ship, though? Why don't I try to kill the clone bay first? We could board with all four crew. That would help, actually. Yeah, let's do that. The ship can't hurt us. All three of them are coming. Yikes. So here's what we want to do. On our first jump in, we want to injure all of the mantises. We don't want to kill any of them if we don't have to, though. Actually, maybe killing one or two is fine. Okay, start breaking that. Yeah, then we have a problem here, though. I think by the time we kill one, a new one will be spawning. Oh, not quite. Now we broke it. Okay, they're dead. That wasn't too bad. That was a lot faster than I thought it would be. Just beat them all to death with sheer numbers. That worked out. And that's where having leveled up mantises made a big difference. The fact that our mantis deals 20, uh, grunt deals 20% more combat damage means we can win the mantis to mantis matchup. Shame about that five hull damage though. Another thing to note, even though the NG only does half combat damage, they still do full damage to systems when they're breaking breaking systems like the clone bay. So they're still good at dismantling the enemy ship. We get a point of reactor upgrade as our reward on this one. That's not too bad. And a shop. Ooh, I like the shop. I'm going to jump here before the shop, I think. Although, let's level up the med bay real quick, just in case. No luck. Uncertain about what you'll discover at this beacon, you scan the surroundings. You detect several warnings on wideband channels discouraging any violence in protected trade space. Fire drone's kind of badass. We could swap out for Clone Bay. That's tempting. There's a Mantis for sale here. Remo. To sell the Mantis pheromones. Our crew moves faster is pretty nice, but it's getting sold here. I think I'll buy Remo. Repair bomb. That's interesting. Yeah, completely repair system damage. Bombs never miss when targeting your own ship. 
I've never used the repair bomb, I don't think. Reach missiles could be fun. I think I'm just gonna buy a Remo here. Let's do that. A couple fuel, because we're actually quite low. All right, welcome aboard Remo the Mantis. Let's open up naming for this new crew. Bug friend. Bug free. I like it. Great bug free. You know what? Let's just repair two more. It's cheap. Immediately. You cross paths with a mantis ship that looks to have dozens of layers of armor plating added over what must have been a hundred year career. It's Captain, legendary thief Kazakh Pleth Killick. Our crew look frightened. Hail him. Your mantis crew member steps forward. He and Kazakh Pleth Killick perform a weird kind of alien haka. You, meanwhile, charge the battle systems. Valyria, Orman, Adriel. Wait, none of these are Kazakh. Hello? Alright, we should just be able to swarm here. Not even a dangerous bomb. This is really not much of a legendary ship, Kazakh. You're a lot more scary when we encounter you in Sector 7. Oh, uh, wait, yeah, I wasn't supposed to do that, huh? Let them... here. Fixing the shields a priority over fighting for your life. That's quite a choice. No more life signs are detected aboard their ship. We appear to have one. Quickly teleport additional crew and check for survivors. You find Kazakh Plethkilik slumped in a corner dying. And with our level 2 medbay, this is why we leveled it up, specifically for this choice right here. Teleport Kazakh back to the medbay. Your haste has paid off, and you are able to bring him back from the brink of death. When his senses return, he says, I never thought I would see this day, but I am willing to devote myself and my ships to your cause. Kazakh Plethkilik joins your crew, offers the coordinates for a nearby stash of stolen military goods, and transmits the coordinates for a custom cruiser that he's been working on. We forward it to the Federation, sure they can make good use of it. We get 30 scrap, we get our Mantis Pheromones back, we get Kazakh, the legendary Mantis Captain, who is maxed out in every skill, and, no, don't jump, and we have the location of Kazakh's cache here, which we're definitely going to go to. If we hadn't had the Mantis ship unlocked, which we obviously do as we're currently playing it, um, then that would have also unlocked the Mantis ship. Definitely a huge win for us. All right, now we have a proper four-person boarding crew. Mommy, you're relegated to engine duty. Now we have four Mantis to board with, and I think that's that's the definite yes. Like the human in piloting over the NG? I could respect that. Uninhabitable planetoids. Lame.
We arrive at a small asteroid field. Actually, that's not what it says. It says you arrive at small asteroid field, literally unplayable, and discover the hidden cache among the debris. You input the codes given to you by Kazak Plethkilik and find a weapon inside. Why did you stash a small bomb? <laughs> I mean, hey, it's actually good. We can power that without any additional effort. And it allows us to deal with some threats, actually. This is really good. Genuinely, it's it's the perfect weapon for this ship. And there's a reason that you start with a small bomb on the Mantis A. Can a bomb kill Zoltan shields? Yes. Although I believe it would take three bombs, therefore three missiles, to get through a uh, Zoltan shield. It is still good. That's a very fast charge time, too. Teleports through normal shields. It's good. The legend understands the power of the small bomb. He does. Except I'm probably going to give five missiles to these nerds. Well, am I? They'll give us a reactor upgrade or something. It's worth about 30 scrap. Maybe I'll keep the missiles. I don't even need the reactor power. I'll keep the missiles. We're going to level up our shields pretty soon, though. And then we immediately go from Mantis Homeworlds to Zoltan Homeworlds. This could be a hell of a run. We also could just run out of fuel in a moment. You've entered Zoltan territory. The species is not renowned for giving anything for nothing, but we can always be sure assured a fair hearing. And there's a lot of nebula beacons here. Interesting. I think I'm going to ignore that distress beacon. Let's go over here. Sultan military vessels engaging in combat training. Very nebulous Zoltan sector. Another dead beacon. Uh-oh. All right, to the shop, because I'm going to run out of fuel immediately. And I'd rather not get stranded just yet. Why ignore the distress beacon? Um, one, because I don't... I suspect I won't have a blue option for it. And two, because the Distress Beacon cannot contain the Zoltan Envoy, which I'm currently looking for. Hopefully they're not there. But yeah, also because we're critically low on fuel. I'm trying to get some, some ground. Cloaking would be nice. Small bomb number two. Firebomb is fun. Firebomb plus boarding. Although I recommend, if you're going to do that, that you have Rockman crew or a clone bay. Sell the Mantis Pheromones again? I actually kind of like them, though. Let's keep them. Another shop. Okay. Hmm. I can buy more fuel. Zoltan Research Facility. They are researching genetic distortion due to stasis sleep. Sure, you can scan me. We're being held hostage, they yell. Oh. I see. This is not what was advertised. This is good, though. Hacked teleporter? That's not so bad, actually. Oh god, the extra guys are responding on the enemy ship. Oh god. They have so many crew members. Terrible. Oh, garbage. My shields are down for some reason. Hmm. 
I'm leaving. My friends, please, there is nothing I don't have, and there is nothing want worth wanting that I can't get. Why not take a look around my shop? You have long-range scanners. Those are pretty good. More fuel. At least we're not getting scanners, unless I sell the mantis pheromones. A small bomb might have solved the issue in the last fight there. Yeah, had I bombed the clone baby, we might have been able to do that. I definitely didn't expect it to be such a problem. But it's clear we need level 3 shields soon. I keep, have to invest in, keep having to invest scrap in other things. I'm not happy about. Oh well. sector is terrible. Oh, give me more fuel. Let's buy two pirate ships lurking in the nebula here. One is carrying fuel, the other ammunition. I would love more fuel. Let's get some fuel. We've got nasty guns, but whatever. I've got four mantises, so I'm gonna die. Yeah, that didn't take long. We get three fuel, 35 scrap. Two drone parts to beat this thing. See, this can't. That's right. Thank you. a nasty missile launcher. Hopefully the boarding drone goes to the weapons next. If not, hopefully the defense drone will keep us safe. Defense drone? That was in the, the dead zone targeting the, one of the front two rooms. The defense drones are slightly flawed, unfortunately. Okay, I'm leaving, because I'm going to get hit again. No, thank you. Oh, God. Well, that's what we get. Uh, once the shields are fixed, this won't be bad, though. Go on over here. Dodge, good dodge. Uh, let's small bomb this thing. No. Twelve damage. This is three. Now the shield room is on fire. Oh, screw it. Out of the frying pan into the fire, huh? There we go. Shields are up. 
Okay, we shut down the combat drone, but we got hit again. I don't have to die. Oh my god. What an abject disaster. The whole ship is on fire. I think we're dead here, actually. Looks like we're dead. Well, that's a tough way to go. Okay, shields are back up. Uh, let's see. Everything is offline and on fire. Putting the med bay. Do not see how to fix this. Even if the enemy ship were gone, I don't I don't see how we don't die here. Everyone's injured, the med bay's down, there's no oxygen. So I think we're completely toast. Yeah, at least the lack of oxygen will fix the fire problem. And the O2 is so far away, and I don't have leveled medbay. No, we're dead. We're dead here, Twishet. The ship is destroyed now. It's a real bummer. This thing's really spiraled out of control in the uniquely FTL way. If it, if it weren't for having to jump out of the previous fight with the shields down, this ship would have been fine. But because we had to jump in with no shields, we got killed. Oh well, rip Kazak and everybody else, huh? If only I had the system repair bomb. This is where repair bomb would save us. Fix it. Power it. Wait. They're gonna kill us though. <laughs> They're super gonna kill us. Nah, he couldn't make it. GG. GG. Toasted to death by the fire drone. What a way to go. I want my mummy. I do. A bitter end for what had been a very promising run. Though it goes in FTL, this game's hard. This game's very hard. And just a, a slight slip up can really spiral out of control in this game. Such is the way of boarding ships especially, yes. Somebody, somebody mentioned that this ship in particular was prone to going sideways fast. And I didn't give much credit to that statement at the time, but in retrospect, it was pretty, um, pretty accurate. Wonder if the run needed to invest in weapons earlier to deal with auto ships? It does seem like taking that burst laser Mark I that we were offered early was probably the right play, as that would have helped some of our problems. So is this like Spire where you have to build to beat certain fights? Yes. Yes. You really do have to counter some of the, the worst case scenarios. Could this have been prevented really? Definitely. Oh yeah, there were a myriad of things we could have done. I think it would have been fine if the freaking boarding, uh, if the defense drone didn't have the stupid gap in the front 
That's what actually started all of this, was the defense drone missing the missile and taking three damage to the shields room. Yeah. But that's why FTL is 12 years old and has been supplanted by slightly better designed roguelites. There are some there are some pain points where FTL really shows its age, such as the crew training moments, which is actually something that we could have done to alter the fate of this run, is spend 20 to 30 minutes just waiting for our skills to level up. And that could have actually impacted the run substantially. But that's FTL. Part of what makes it hard, why we still love it, even... Uh, over a decade after its release. Don't have time for another FTL run Twitch chat. I suppose I'm going to get on out of here then. Call this one a day. We're going to be back in the saddle tomorrow, playing some more Slay the Spire. And continuing our uh, Queen's Hand mode playthrough in Against the Storm as well. Then coming up on Saturday... It's going to be a modded Spire day. Checking out the Biomes mod again. See you later, Stoffy, Curry, Yum Yum to Cat, Annabel, Garth the Body Walker, Ninja Pears, and everybody else. See you later, Zavern. Ata for now, El Tito. Have a good, good evening, everybody. Gonna throw a raid over to Nave Greed, who is playing some Slay the Spire. Nave Greed does high level Spire, currently doing a quote unquote have fun challenge, which sounds exactly like our sort of challenge. So say hello, give him a warm hey from me, and please enjoy some high level Spire pokes. Toodaloo, everybody, and good night.